This is the 2021 Stampers Anonymous Halloween release. We're gonna first talk about the stamps and then we will go into the stencils. You guys ready for that? Okay, here we go. So as I mentioned, um, I like to create sets that are very random and I'll, I'll say it again. I say it every time. I don't draw, I license all of my art. I seek out uh, all types of different art. Sometimes it's ephemera based, uh, but I like to really look for art that I think captures a, a whole different idea or concept. And I try to put them onto the sets, the CMS sets, uh, cling mounted set, okay? It is red rubber, that's what I love about Stampers Anonymous. Cling rubber, um, the cling, it's not an adhesive, so this is something that of course, if you use your stamps and if you're not familiar with this, uh, cling is something that just keeps going and going. If it ever doesn't cling to a block, it just means there's ink or oil on here. You just clean it with soap and water. But I love red rubber because of that because of that detail, even down to the shading. And really no one does it better than the team at Stampers Anonymous in Cleveland, Ohio. So a shout out to the team there because really they create uh, unbelievable stamps and imagery. So this first set, this is Rest in Peace, really inspired by this very cool skull sketch. I love the illustration of this. He's got a nice smile on him, not super creepy, but definitely very cool. But then it is paired with a lot of ephemera. So this is all inspired by vintage ephemera that uh, maybe I bought a, a receipt like from this, this undertaker uh, with coffins and burial robes, or maybe it's uh, an old apothecary or pharmacy label. Just really random things that I like to pair together with a set that I think would be uh, cool. I love this condemned stamp. I love this you know, about serving to strengthen the bones and muscles. Just something that's going to be odd and eclectic. So if you are one of those makers that uh, you like to make for Halloween and you're more on the creepy dark side like I am, absolutely love it. Um, or maybe you just like a lot of this cool typography to use in collage. Maybe you do stuff where when it comes to steampunk, you still like all these weird quirky stamps, weird little numbers and signatures, then I think Rest in Peace is going to be your jam. But when you see this skull, you're gonna be surprised. I was certainly surprised of how the makers have transformed this into everything from really dark and creepy into actually a touch of whimsy. It's it's pretty amazing. So I do love the set. This is set CMS 435. So all the sets are numbered. We started with CMS 001. So it just shows how many sets. Again, with Stampers Anonymous, if you're not familiar with this brand, uh, all of my stamps with Stampers Anonymous, all the CMS sets, they, they never retire. So Ted continues to make my stamps uh, indefinitely. So if they're older sets, you can always get those. So when we talk about previous Halloweens or Christmas or every day. That's a very cool thing about uh, Stampers Anonymous. And of course, that the fact that these stamps are made in Cleveland, Ohio, he can just keep uh, the original mag plates and he'll just, he'll produce them. So it's really cool. So that is rest in peace. So far, so good. Uh, all right, next up. Oh, I love this one. This is called Moth study. Now I'm a huge fan of insects and bugs, especially when it comes to stamps. You know, I love uh, entomology set. I'll answer this right now. There is not a die that goes with it. There is not a die. There will not be a die. There's not a die coming out. There are no dies to coordinate with the stamps. This requires scissors and cutting, and you'll see from the makes that it's pretty easy to do. Um, I do love moth study because it has so many cool vintage moths. These were all vintage illustrations and I absolutely loved the detail. And of course, because we're talking about red rubber, you can achieve that detail. Now, because the set has a bazillion stamps, it is what we call unweeded, meaning this outer part is still attached. Um, as, a, as a maker, when you get your set, you can either leave it like this where, you know, you can take out, because these are all die cut, you can take out the stamp. The first time it's got just kind of those little little barbs in there that will that will hold on to this. When you're done with it, you can pop it back in. If you don't like this, right, because you're not one of those puzzle people, you can just weed it yourself. And that is just, you know, hold on to those stamps, take your fingers, kind of pull all this off so everything stays. And you can remove this and you can throw this outer part away and you can keep your set like this. The only thing to keep in mind is most of the time when we're not weeding a set, it's because it's got tiny little stamps on here that we feel even though they cling, they just have an opportunity to kind of get lost. So again, some people like the idea that they can fit their stamps back into these little compartments and some people are incredibly bothered by it, but you do what works for you. Here, let me pop this out. There we go. All right, 
So the thing to know about uh, this set and what I love about this set is not only do we have all of this great imagery, but if you look at the bottom, I found these really cool, I don't know, they're kind of labels or markings. These were from uh, vintage uh, actual specimen labels that I saw. We scanned them in and very, very cool that you can stamp this, color it, over stamp with that any of these little specimens. I love these little numbers. And again, you can see just from the cut, they're just chopped because it's just a tiny little bit of typography on there, right? I'm gonna take mine off just because I can, just to show people, because sometimes people really, really get a little panicky because they think they can't do it. And you can, you just have to, the first time, because I do, I will say that uh, because I keep all of my stamps in a stamp storage binder, my stamp storage binders from Ideology, I do weed my stamps because I just prefer, I'm not a, I'm not a puzzle person. Well, I try, you can ask Mario. I, I try to do puzzles, but you can tell just from probably watching this video when I tried to shove these back into the spot, I can't be bothered with that. My stamps end up wherever they end up. Sometimes they're upside down on the sheet, sometimes they're not. But really the first time, and you can peel off the whole thing and, and pop them out. You can put it out however you want, but this way, just holding that. So can you believe that any of your sets, because all the sets start that way, right? Every set starts with a sheet of rubber. Someone at Stampers Anonymous, every single set by hand does what I do, right? For all the sets that are weeded, it's not done by a machine, it's done by someone by hand that's taking their fingers, holding the stamp and ripping out the, the outer part. So there you go, that's the part that is gone. And now I have my set, right? So, oh, see, I like that. I don't know, I just get to see the images different, but yeah, you gotta be careful with these little guys. If you're not storing your, your stamps in something else, that's the, the important thing. So um, there you are. Absolutely love the whole look of this set. You can see there are tons of images on Moth Study and the detail, very cool. And a lot of people think moths are butterflies and you'll see from the makes that certainly they can be. All right, next up, a little touch of whimsy here. This is Halloween Doodles. So if you look at Halloween Doodles, you're gonna see a really fun sketch doodly kind of set that just has a touch of whimsy, everything from this, this dancing skelly. And when I say sketch, you can see just the detail of that. I love uh, this artist style with adding that little bit of shading around there because I think it already gives you uh, some great depth and detail, very easy to color if you're gonna do inks or pencils or anything like that. I love the little ghost, the skelly, the hat, poison bottle, the bone, a couple little toadstools. There's a pumpkin, little sparkly stars. Ooh, that drippy candle. That's a little everything. And of course, candy, because I love candy. And if you've been following the sneak peeks on social media, uh, it's really great because you see a lot of different elements. Uh, one of the things, and you'll see in one of the makes, um, was snarky cats. People thought we would have new snarky cats. There are no new snarky cats uh, coming out. But what's cool is that these elements are scaled for the snarky cats that are in the line so you can make them look new, right? It's always great to take an older image and give it a whole new character because maybe that is one of your, your favorites that you go to. And having these kind of playful things, now you can use your favorite images but add new elements for the next year. So that's something that, that's really important to keep in mind. And I do keep that in mind also when I'm designing that, you know, what is the scale that I want? Do I want it to work with something else? Does it really matter? And in this case, when I have the opportunity to do that, I think it would be a lot of fun to try to keep stuff in scale. I do love the doodles, especially for people that like to color because it is something that you can color. All right, next are bold frights. Now, I love the bold. We did bold tidings last Christmas. We even did some uh, bold, I think they're bold sayings or bold greetings. We did that in June. I just like a good, bold stamp just because it's great for a tag, it's great for a card front. And so I wanted to continue that for Halloween. So bold frights, as you can see, they're all that same width. So it's gonna work on a card front or a number eight tag. It's just a bunch of hocus pocus. I put a spell on you, boo, I'm here for the candy. Yes, uh, trick or treat. And the thing again, I'll talk about bold. If you look closely at the font, the font is designed with a little bit of imperfection in there. You see all those little pit marks? That is by design. That has nothing to do with uh, how they make the stamp. I design uh, these because I like that bold with a little pit because usually when I'm inking up something bold, it has a tendency to kind of stamp a little pity sometimes. And so I thought, why not just embrace that? Great for embossing, 
The nice thing about this is that it's such a large surface that it, it is perfect for using your embossing powders, your inks, your oxides, uh, your archivals on there, and it just makes a great focal point. It is also nice, and again, you'll see from the makes that these are scaled also with these guys, right? So if you wanted to create something, like you could put on a card, you could have Boo on there, you could then take the Ghost, and that's gonna fit right on top, right? So that's gonna work on a card. Or if you wanted to do, uh, I put a spell on you, right? Maybe that's gonna be something that you stamp on a card. Well, this hat is scaled that it can sit right on top. So it's not that you have to do it that way, obviously not. You can take any element that you might have and you're like, hey, I've got this from last year. And you'll see, I think even uh, Jen Shirk has used some, some older uh, images with the new Bold Frights. That's the thing to remember about stamps. Stamps are tools. These are tools that you want to get out of the toolbox and use again and again and again. So those are bold frights. And then we got this one. Now, Diane is here. And I have to say, Di, Diane Reebley, Dilusions. When I was designing this, I swear, I don't know what it was. I think it was, you know, back when we were roommates, Mario, right? When we were roomies uh, back in the Ranger days. And she was like, Di's hair was the whole victory roll. And she was doing this whole pinup look. Okay. These are Wicked Hipsters. And the Wicked Hipsters are these very fun, very hip skeletons. And this one right here, just that whole little style and the band, I'm like, this is like, this is Diane, right? I just, I absolutely love uh, these Wicked Hipsters. They're fun, they, they just make me laugh. The artists that, that did these, just absolutely unbelievable. I love, even from the jawline, how the jawline is so different between these two Hipsters. He's got very cool hair, love his mustache. Now, these Wicked Hipsters, you can use them by themselves, obviously, as just that own design, but they also have some accessories, right? So this could be a bow tie that you can stamp. She could have some pearls or a necklace. See how that fits right around there? So when you're stamping, it's very easy. You don't need to do any masking or anything. I just designed that already where it, could, it can kind of connect right behind there. You can give them different glasses. Again, she's got the very cool glasses. You can cut that out. He's got these, kind of like my glasses. He's got these guys, right? Or you can mix and match. And so yes, these glasses are sized to fit their eyes. You'll just need to, to cut them out with a blade if you wanted to utilize those. But these are Wicked Hipsters. It's just a fun set. Again, it may not be your jam, right? This might be your jam, right? Or Doodles might be your jam, or Moths might be your jam, or Rest in Peace might be your jam, or none of it's your jam. But before you judge, <laughs> I encourage you to just look at the makes because the makes are very inspiring to see all the different potential of a single image. That to me is, is what's shocking. And so when I show you the makes, they are sorted by set. So you will be able to say like, oh, I don't know, do, is anything on here gonna inspire me? Well, you'll see all of the makes first and then you can say, yeah, no, nothing there, or hey, I love it. But these, they just make me laugh. They make me smile. And so if that happens, that just seems to be an art that I hope you guys enjoy as well. But seriously, look at the detail. That's what I love. The drawing in there, the little wisps. You know it. Yeah, gonna color her hair red, right, Di? Very cool. Remember that with the victory roll and she, oh my when, gosh. I remember when she took that thing out of her hair and like <laughs> run, running out of the house. Yeah, it was so, it was so good. All right, so these are the sets. These are the five sets. We have Wicked Hipsters. We have Bold Frights. We have the Halloween Doodles. We have Moth Study, and we have Rest in Peace. But we also have uh, stencils, so I'll talk about that. This is the stencil set I have for Halloween. These are the Shifter Multis, okay? Now, keep in mind that Shifter Multi, these are not minis. So if you see them online, and you're used to kind of seeing this package where it's got the stencil and the three, do not assume these are minis. These are regulation size, right? So when I talk about the mini, this is the mini stencil size. This is regulation. And Shifter Multi, this is only actually the second one in a, in a series, right? We, we've done Shifter Multi Dots. This is Shifter Multi Harlequin. Now what I love, and I'm gonna demo Shifters today as well, but what I love about this pack is that we actually give you uh, three different scales or size of that particular pattern. And you'll see from the makes, that's what's really cool is the fact that when you're working with this, sometimes you want a smaller scale Harlequin pattern, sometimes medium and sometimes big, depending on what you're doing. But because it is a shifter, we have the ability to shift 
and create multiple colors with the pattern. That's why I'm gonna demo these from how you prep them to how you use them and all of that. So that is the stencil set for Halloween. And then what I wanted to create is something that was inspired by Emma. Emma Williams, she did a technique, well, it was the first time I saw it. You know, I'm, I, I always think it's important that uh, as, a, as a maker, if you're inspired by something you see, then credit the person that inspired you. It doesn't mean that that, you know, like that put in the flag, it's the first time it's ever been in the industry. But I think it's always great to say where you found the inspiration. And I was inspired by Emma. This was actually a tutorial she did uh, on Simon Says Stamp blog in 2014. Now, Emma's a maker for uh, for the brand and she she's done moons many times. But every time I see a tutorial, it's about taking a post-it or taking a circle punch or doing whatever. And then it's like, well, what do you do with that big hole, that big circle? And I've seen uh, a lot of different uh, variations of moons and circles. I've seen uh, Stacy, Stacy created ones with all sorts of cool blends, which I'm gonna demo that. I've also seen uh, a circle being used as a sun. Cassie did that with the sun with the funky cactus back in June. But this set, these are just moon masks. It's very simple, but to me, it's also very cool. I just thought, gosh, why hasn't this been done? And so what it is, it is a series of six mask pieces. There are three solid circles and three detailed layers. Now these detailed layers, this is designed to be the moon, but it could be obviously any other planet if you want it to be. But I'll just, actually, I don't even need to open this up because I have them open. Let me just grab them over here. Uh, and I'm going to demo these as well, just to kind of show you, but you have the solid circle piece out of this stencil, stencil material, and then you have that cutout detail out of the same stencil material. And so you can just use the circle if you want that mask and, and use it for a sun or, or anything else. And then of course you have that overlay to get the detail. And this is really cool. Where do you see how they're done uh, with the, the Halloween cards? They're just, they're, it's very, very cool. So you do get three different sizes. I think this smallest one might be two inch ish and then maybe three and maybe four. I'm not sure of the actual measurements, but uh, ish. I, I, Mari, can you grab me a ruler? I'll just do that real quick. Yeah. Thanks. Because you never know. You know, you guys might want to see from scale like what that is. So, yeah, we've got um, I'm going to say that's about two and a quarter for that one. And then we go to three for the medium size and then we go about three and three quarters for that. So they'll all fit like on an A2 if you're if you're working on a, a card size for that. But yes, the moon masks. So there we go. We've got the moon mask and we have the stencils. A very simple release. Very cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. Boom. Sizes right away. That's that's quick right there. All right. So here we go with just kind of taking you through the, the demo side first. Right. And then we'll we'll go into the other makes. So for the demo, let me, hey, can you do me a favor, Mark? <laughs> you got my media mat right there. I think I'm going to use that. I was just going to demo on here, but I, I think, I feel like getting inky, you guys. But it wasn't it's going to do, demo? well, I, I wasn't going to, but you know how I am. That's a good thing. You know how I am. I decided I'm going to do one thing and then I totally changed my mind. So welcome to my brain. Okay. That is the, the brain of me where it's like, I'm going to do this. I have it all planned. And then I'm like, no. I'm going to do something different. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about shifters first, and then we're going to get into the moon. So here's the thing about shifter stencils. So shifter stencils, this is how they come packaged. And you saw that set of three, right? And what it is, it's a stencil that has a cutout design, and then it has a pattern that's been etched into the stencil. Okay, so this isn't cut through. This isn't designed to punch out. It's just kind of, because these are all done by a laser, uh, they set that and really a shout out to Matt at Stampers Anonymous. He figures out all of the logistics to make this repeat work. <clears throat> but I've always looked at pattern paper, especially uh, things with polka dots or harlequins or stripes or diamonds or hearts. And anytime I see a repeat, usually on pattern paper, you see different colors of that pattern. I'm like, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if you could actually stencil in different colors? And that was the inspiration behind the shifters, right? So the shifter allows you to create this kind of effect where you can take a pattern and you could ink it in different colors with ease. You don't have to do the masking because the shifter stencil does the masking, right? So you as the maker get to choose whatever colors you want. And you'll even see from a maker that uh, although you can, it's designed to shift twice, you can continue to shift it. You can then move it down a row and continue colors and it, it's very confusing, but I'm gonna show you just the basics of shifter. So the benefit of this multi-set, the same thing with the multi dots. There's only 
two so far in the series of what we call shifter multi, and that is where you get three different scales of the same pattern. Now, not to be confused with other shifters, because I do have, um, there's a lot of different shifters in the line. Let's see if I can go through that. There you go. I can always tell because I have the painted ones. Like that's a shifter where you can get different color rays. That's a shifter. You get different color chevrons, uh, like the mermaid scales. So shifters are always going to be identified that way. And I'm going to talk about how I get like the black lines in shifters. I love this one. That's a garland, right? And these are all again, referenced by numbers similar to the stamps. Oh, I love this one. This is candy. So you can do like little shifter peppermints. Oh, so cool. All right. So here's what you do with a shifter. Let me, now hold on. I got to get myself sorted here. Hang those back up. So when you first get it, my advice is to go in and create these outlines. Now people say, well, can't they come that way? The answer would be no, they can't. These are done with a laser. So if you want this, it's going to take some black acrylic paint, a few minutes of your time, and you only have to do it once. Once you do it, you'll never have to do it again because the paint stays permanent on your stencil. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. So I've not, I prepped these. I've not prepped this one just to show you how I do it. If you have a different way, you do what always works for you. I normally start with like a piece of parchment paper. That's going to be fine. I want something that's going to be kind of slick on the base. If you don't have parchment paper, you can work right here on the craft mat part, or maybe if you want it, you can work on the glass, but I like to do something slick versus a paper towel underneath because a paper towel is going to have too much grab or too much catch. Next, you're going to want black acrylic paint. Now it doesn't have to be distress paint. It could be any kind of black acrylic paint that you want, uh, but you want it to be paint over ink because we want something that's going to be opaque, a little thicker than uh, the ink viscosity, and of course permanent. And distress paint is permanent when it's dry. Then you're going to want some type of blender tool. Now I have the domed foam, I have paint. Now because I use distress paint, Distress paint doesn't have any filler in it. So even though this is dry on the foam, you can see that my foam is still incredibly soft because this paint doesn't have filler. So once I have a foam, that's why I have it wrapped up here. When, when I have a black paint foam, I just use the same one indefinitely. And you can use this with the dome foam as well as the flat foam as well. That's the cool thing about uh, working with paints and different kinds of paints. There's a lot of paints that don't uh, have fillers like Dilutions paints. They don't have fillers, Dina. So, I mean, Ranger makes really great quality paints in that aspect. And that's why you see us all using uh, this. Like you'll see Diane with all of her foams because the cool thing about these paints is that it's not gonna get hard and crunchy and you can just continue to use that. So I'm going to take this paint. Now I will say that black distress paint is very fluid, way more fluid than the rest of it, okay? Um, this is really great for stencils. I also like this viscosity when I'm splattering black paint, you don't have to wet it out, but always keep that in mind about black compared to all of the other colors in the line. It's just very fluid. You know, some people just don't like how fluid it is and that's okay, but I'm just going to go in and put a few drips right there, right on the craft mat. Then you're gonna want a paper towel, some type of cloth, whatever that is. We're going to take that, we're going to dip that into the paint, just kind of work that into the foam. All right, you guys see it okay? Good, good, good. Working here, working on the printed side, so the logo side up, that's the side where the engraving is. If you do it on the back, it's not gonna work, okay? And then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it right over the stencil, okay? So you can see that I'm swiping over this first just to get that layer on there. And then I'll go in and just kind of do a little little pounce play, if you will, just to kind of work some of that paint in there. But notice that I'm not like souping this up. That's the important thing. You don't want this to be really totally loaded and very soupy, okay? You see how that paper just allowed me to swipe it right over the stencil? And this is what we have so far. Then I'm going to remove this. Now you can flip this over, you can fold it in half, you can you can do whatever you wanna do with this piece of paper. Normally I'll just fold it so I've got the paint now on the inside and I can work on a clean area. It is important that you wanna work on a clean area. And you're gonna take that dry paper towel and you're do, just gonna start wiping off this paint. Now it is important that you do one at a time because once distressed paint dries, it would be permanent. And then you would have to you know, go in with hand sanitizer or something to really clean it. But all I'm doing with that dry paper towel is I'm just kind of wiping away the excess paint. And once I get the bulk of it off, 
Then I just move right here on the mat and I just lightly go in different directions. Make sure you're holding onto your stencil because you don't want to buckle or bend your stencil when you're doing this. You're not scrubbing. Notice, see, my fingers have not turned a color by pushing hard. You're just cleaning that off. Then you're going to flip it over to make sure you don't have any paint that oozed on the other side. If you use too much paint, sometimes you get paint oozed. You would clean it off that way. But that's it. That's all we've done is we've created these outlines. Now, if you want your outlines to be darker, no worries. Just do it again, right? Place that back down. Take the paint. I'll just show you real quick on a little section. We can go back in with more paint. And if you're like, okay, I want that to be just darker because I can't see that area. No problem. Just repeat the process. Put the paint on. First, work in a circular motion because we want to get the paint into uh, that area and then just go back and forth and then those lines become a little darker. And that's it. Again, once this is done, you never have to do it again. Even if you soak these in water, clean it with soap and water, whatever, the paint will remain in those grooves indefinitely. So it is beneficial to do this. It makes it so much easier to line up. It's also a great way to identify the marking down there, right? So that's just, that's my tip for shifter. And the cool thing about, again, using paint is now when I use inks or sprays or paste, anything I wanna do over that, it is not going to re-wet this because my paint is now permanent, okay? So once a shifter is prepped and you're ready to go, here's how you do a shifter, right? When I work with a shifter, I prefer to use uh, inks. Now they could be uh, distress inks, they could be oxide, it could be a combination of whatever. I'm just gonna do distress inks this morning just because I think, um, I had stuff set aside and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to demo you. It's a whole conversation around here with Mario. He's like, what do you have all these buckets for? I'm like, because maybe I will be in the mood to demo and maybe not. I'm not sure. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on inking. And I think what I'll do is I'll just, I'll shift this big one, right? The one that we just did. But again, it could be, it could be any size. I'll get those samples back just to show you from a scale perspective your options, so much fun to do. Now here's a couple things just about stenciling 101. I'm gonna grab a piece of, just grab a piece of paper for now. Maybe I'll just grab a tag real quick, just to show you uh, just kind of a difference. If you have a stencil, I'm just gonna place this down. This isn't gonna be like an official inking at this point. Let me go in with, I'll take a little, I'll just take some carved pumpkin, okay? Um, I'm gonna make sure that I take actual tool for ink. If you have a blending tool, something that you're just going to do inking, and whether that's a domed foam or a flat foam, and I pick up some ink and I go through a stencil and maybe I'm swiping this on or maybe I'm dabbing, okay? Different tools are going to give you a different effect depending on your pattern, right? So for example, on this one, it's, it's pretty good, right? It's not too bad because a domed foam, because it has that arc, tends to get into areas a little better than a flat foam. However, if your stencil is very detailed, meaning maybe it's something like an alphabet or, and it has to be, I mean, I'm saying detailed, like points of a star or maybe a floral or like a clock, anything like that. And you're trying to establish that crispy detail. I would recommend stenciling with a brush, some type of brush. Now, if you have an ink brush of any kind, that's gonna work. If you have the Distress Blending Brush, uh, that's kind of my go-to thing. So I'm gonna take the orange one. I just use a Sharpie to kind of color code mine. Um, but I love the blending brushes because it is a natural bristle. It has that nice dome and it allows me to either condense the bristles or open them up. But the benefit I feel that when it comes to stenciling, and again, I'm not showing you the shifter part yet. I'm just showing you stenciling 101 is if I pick up some color on my brush, right? And I'm going and I'm doing my stencils. So first off, the brush allows me to really create a soft effect. So now I've got the brush all the way up because these bristles are longer. They're not compact like a regular ink brush. And so this allows me to go in a, a swirly twirly kind of motion like this. Okay. But look at the effect that's going to happen. Look at that cool gradation right? See that? That was super easy. And all I was doing was like swirly, swirly. But can you see the difference between those points and that, how that's a bit rounded? So see how it's pointy, rounded. The benefit of a brush, and I'll, I'll go on the back and, and just kind of show you again, if I'm just going to ink that up. The benefit of a brush is not only can I just go in and ink, but now I can slide this forward, which is going to make those bristles compact, kind of like the, 
the ink brushes that you see on the marketplace now with the handle. And now I can go into that design and a brush is going to actually get the color all the way to the edge of that cutout, right? So now your design is really detailed. So you have the ability to create that detailed sharp edge, that blended edge versus a foam. Now a foam is not bad, right? You're still gonna get a pattern, but there's a huge difference between that rounded design and that crisp detailed design just because of using a brush. So that is my tip when it comes to stenciling, especially with a shifter. If you are going for a pattern and you wanna have more detail, more definition, you're going to get a better result from a blending brush for that versus blending foam. Again, just, just that, okay? So let's start with this. Let's just pretend this was clean. Pretend by actually cleaning it. There we go. Just damp paper towel. I'm gonna to clean this off. Okay, so here we go. Reset the deck. Shifting. When you shift, you wanna make sure that a design can't move around. So a couple of things that I like to use, I talk about it a lot. It can be sticky grid, right? So sticky grid, sticky grid was, um, it's kind of a double sticky kind of post-it kind of material. It's repositionable, it's great, for, it's designed really for die cutting, but I use it a lot for shifter. Now you can use uh, this small, we also just launched this new size. This actually just came out with the Halloween dies last Saturday. It's a large six by eight sheet of the same sticky grid. I'll talk about it more when we do some seasonal demos with Sizzix later in the year, but it's the same stuff. It's just this one is for the sidekick and this is for uh, larger machines like the Vagabond or the Big Shot because it covers an entire cutting pad. When I work with it, and you're gonna see even with the moon, I take my sticky grid, I use it for a lot of different things. So I have no problem just kind of uh, cutting into it but for this, <laughs> Mario, could you, you can you grab me scissors? Oh no, I've got them right here. Never mind. I was ready. I was ready. Okay. So I'm just going to cut a piece of sticky grid. So I'm going to just trim off this and I'll, I'll just have a piece that's, I don't know. It really doesn't matter. You don't need one. That's the entire size of your card for that matter. Okay. So sticky grid, you peel it off, kind of tacky, peel it off, kind of tacky, double tack. Okay. And that's just going to hold my paper. And I'm just going to demo this. Um, I'll just do another background. Let's actually do, we'll just do it on a piece of white cardstock. So I'll place this down on the mat. Okay, so that's stuck. And then I can place this down. And I like to line up my paper using the grid of the media mat. That's going to help for a pattern. And by doing that, you can see that it's already done. Maybe they can manufacture with the outline already on. No, I already mentioned that. The outline is engraved. You just have to go in and paint it because these are laser cut and this is just pad printed. So it's going to take five minutes of using acrylic paint and you're done. As makers, we got to make. So next we're going to take our stencil. So this is positioned on the grid. We're going to take that stencil, we're gonna place it down. Now you can start wherever you want. You can start off the edge, you can start in the middle. It really just depends on how much of that pattern you wanna repeat. And remember with a stencil, you don't always have to go from edge to edge. You can have it fade out like I did here. So once you kind of get the hang of it, you'll enjoy the play of it. So next I'll just take a piece of masking tape. I prefer to do masking tape whenever I am stenciling because I like to flip and see what I have. So what I'm doing first is I'm making sure that my stencil is running parallel with the edge of my paper. I'll just place that there because I wanna be able to always look to see what I have and put it back down. So I'm not really a fan of any other uh, way to work with the top stencil because I just like to see what's going on and what I'm doing. So I'm gonna work with ink. So I'm gonna work with two colors for this one. I'm gonna use uh, Carved Pumpkin and Crackling Campfire as my orange because I wanna do a little bit of blending. Okay, so I'll just start with a color. It's funny because anytime we stencil, I still think you just kind of get in that habit of what, holding onto the stencil. So it doesn't matter what you use uh, on top of it. You still want to just have your hands there. I don't know. It's some sort of creative support, right? So I'm just going to start with my blending brush open and just kind of swirling it around. Then I want to take a little crackling campfire. So because it's still part of the, the orange family, I can use the same brush. Now, if you are going to go from ink to oxide, you are gonna to wanna to clean your brush or, or have a different set of brushes for your oxide because you never wanna cross-contaminate an ink with an oxide. But color, 
I can go right back into the light color. You're not going to contaminate your ink pads with a brush by double dipping ever. You just won't. There's not enough ink for that to happen. So what I'm doing with that campfire, and you can see, I'm just going in and kind of hitting a couple of those Harlequins a little darker, just so my pattern, I don't know, it just has more oomph, I guess. That's just me. Then I'm going to pick this up, see if I like it. Ooh, I do. Maybe I want a little more fade. Put that back down and fade that out. Easy enough? Okay. Part one, done. So to close your blending brush, you're just gonna slide this up. That's gonna completely cover the bristles. Those little bumps right there, cap locks into that, base locks into that, and you can throw it back in. This is just the Distress Minis uh, storage tin. I just take out the insert and your blending brushes fit. My next color, I'm gonna go, well, let's go purple on this one. Why not? Because we can. So I'm gonna take my purple blending brush, all right? Can you double dip if you only use oxide pads? You can, is you can double dip in a color family. Well, you can double dip whatever, oxide to oxide, ink to ink, that's fine. It's just, you never wanna go ink to oxide with, with the same brush. So before you shift, you need to clean this. You do need to clean this. Um, just because whatever color's on your stencil is going to mix in with whatever color ink you use. So for, for example, because I'm going into purple, if I don't clean this and I start blending, orange and purple make brown. I don't wanna make brown. So very simple to clean the stencil at this point. I'm just going to take some water, spray it on a paper towel. You could have a cloth, a baby wipe, whatever you're gonna do. Holding onto that piece of tape, I'm just going to wipe right over the surface of that and remove that ink. Then I'm always going to turn it over, wipe the back, just because you may push some of that ink on the underside, but there you go, clean, ready to go. And my tape is good. Here comes the shift. So. This is how we inked it, correct? And I, I'd like to kind of zoom in, but uh, you'll get the idea. That's why I chose the big one. So to shift, what you're going to do is you're simply going to shift the stencil in whatever direction you want. We can shift it up. We can shift it over. We can shift it down. But what we're doing is we are taking that pattern and we are now going to outline that design with that paint outline. So if I went up, I'm just going to find that next painted one so if you see that painted outline, you see how I can frame that in? And I'm going to frame that inked layer, just like that. So that black outline is going to outline the color I just put on there. So your stencil is shifted. You're gonna use the same piece of tape, stick that down on the mat, and now we go into color two, whatever that is. So in this case, I'm gonna go in a little purple. I'm gonna use a little See This Preserves and some Shaded Lilac. This is a magical color, Shaded Lilac. You'll see, look at that. Woohoo! yeah, if you, I'm telling you, it's a very cool color. I'm gonna start with that. Again, just go in, little soft inky swirl. And you can just really get in here with uh, a lot of different mediums. You can do this with sprays and you were just gonna blot off in between sprays. You have some great options when it comes to color. Now we're gonna do a little shaded lilac. That's gonna create a whole different color. And it's nice because um, although it, it is a lighter color than Seedless Preserves, because of its type of color, it's more of a, a cool purple versus a warm. Uh, it's still going to give us that contrast even over something like seedless. But I've slid this down, so I almost kind of treat this like, I don't know, like a trombone. If you guys played that, but um, you can just slide that down to really control the intensity of the color or the blend. So I'm always just sliding this with my finger right here um, when I'm blending. So maybe I want it soft, and then maybe right here I want to focus that color. And that's really what I love about the Distress blending brushes. I know some people, a lot of people love the those softer makeup ones. I just, this is kind of my jam. You do what works for you and that's all that matters, right? So when I'm done with that, I know I'll be happy with this color. Cap those up. And then we're simply going to lift that up and there is our shifted color. So now we can peel this off from our sticky grid. It's reusable. And that is our shift. Look at that. How cool. Now we can do all sorts of things. We can flick with water, we can blend, we can do all sorts of things. This, reusable, so if you still kept these pieces, you can store it here. I know some people uh, put this in like clear page protectors to store it and reuse it. You're gonna reuse it until it's no longer sticky. And then when it's no longer sticky, you will need to throw it away because you can't revive this in any way. But that's, that's a great thing when it comes to this. Now, cleaning my stencil, again, really simple. 
spray and swipe. So wipe that over the top, really easy. Wipe the back, done, clean, masking tape come off, use it again. So that is the shifter. Now this again, if you're kind of one of those um, more distress, right? Spray that with a little bit of water. Mm, let it kind of do its thing. Ah, do a little working. Yeah, starting to do a little wick. Ah, there we go. Then we can, yeah, just kind of dry that over the top. You could brush over this. There's a lot of ways when it comes to distress ink or oxide, either one or a combination of both. You can certainly use a combination. Just, just remember about your brushes. Um, but this is what I like about working with distress and water, even when it comes to stenciling, because a lot of times people, you kind of forget that, right? So we can go and take whatever effect, but look at how that just completely changed our background. Isn't that cool? It just gave that pattern a little bit more of an organic feel. So you can shift however you want. So let's say you wanted to shift with paint. You would just do the same thing. Put on a color, take off the stencil, clean it, shift, do another color. Let's say you wanted to do embossing glaze, right? If you're going to do distress embossing glaze, you would ink with the color or you could use clear if you were just going to do clear. When you take it off, cover it with glaze, heat it, heat emboss it, and then shift it. Now, the benefit of doing a medium mat is obviously if you're going to do heat embossing, you don't want to heat emboss with sticky grid underneath it. It gets really gunky, so you would have to take it off. But if that was the case, I would just make sure that like if I'm doing shifting, you know, I'm just going to mark that down. It doesn't really matter where you put your paper down again because the outline is here. So even if your paper was this way after you, you know, you did your heat embossing on the orange and you're like, oh, I don't know where this was. Who cares? Because your stencil is what's shifting. You don't have to worry about any registration mark. That just makes things a little easier. But I love the effect of this. You could go in then and now blend the rest of the background. There's just so many uh, opportunities for shifters. And so I like to share that because sometimes um, people really aren't familiar with that. Or when it comes to uh, shifting, you can shift any kind of design. Yes, but this was a, a design that creates a repeat pattern. That's its whole purpose of creating that repeat with the color. All right, now let's get into the moon. I'm gonna talk about the moon mask. Uh, and again, uh, shout out to, to Emma for the inspiration of, of that circle. And then Stacy, I saw a whole different one. I think this was like, gosh, this was stamp timber. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, we did a Halloween set and she did kind of this cool moon thing. So this is the moon mask in action. And I'll do a demo of that. And again, in the moon mask, you're going to get solid pieces and you're going to get detailed pieces. Now, when it comes to stencils, there's a lot of options to keep your stencils sticking down, right? You can use, some people use pixie spray, which is like a, a repositionable tack you can put on the back of your stencils. If that works for you, you do you. You can see here that I have a bunch of different circles of, well, you guessed it, sticky grid. Um, and I've put that on just the different size pieces, just depending on uh, like what the elements are, you can use different size circle punches. And I just punch through that and I have these little sticky areas on, on the moon mask. Okay. So the idea is this, it can achieve this wonderful soft effect. If you're doing ink blending or you can place it down, you're going to get that, that halo from the solid portion, right? So we would put this down, we would ink around it. In this case, it was blue. We could do sprays. We could do whatever you would remove it. And then you would take that top piece, place it down and you can position this wherever you want. It's a circle. So you can have this, this part wherever you want that to be, but you would place that down. You would then ink whatever color you wanted to create kind of that cool moon effect. And it's that easy. It's really that easy. And you just use them again and again and again. So instead of uh, cutting and punching out circles and doing that, you don't really have to, to deal with it. But if you wanted to go a little kind of messy mixed media. This is what I was talking about that uh, Stacy shared that, you know, I love that whole eerie look for Halloween. And so I'll talk about how we do these. I'll actually demo these. These, this is done with ink pads and blending. This is done with sprays and ink blending, right? So that's, what's giving you kind of that cool funky vibe, right? So here we go. Let's do that again, work on whatever paper works for you, whatever you want to work with. I think that's going to be good. So next we're going to take our watercolor. You work with whatever side uh, you want to work on. It comes to the watercolor cardstock. I'm just going to move some stuff out of the way. I've got, I have to always remember to 
If you notice when I'm on video, I always put stuff here and then there's a ledge and I usually throw things right off the edge. I don't want to do that, guys. Okay. How's it going, Mario? It's going great. Good? Okay. So far. You're loving the demo. Well, good. Thanks. I d you know, honestly, guys, I wasn't sure I was going to do it because I thought, I think they're just going to want to like get to the makes, Holtz, get to the makes. But that's it. It is what it is. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit, right? Okay. I'm going to take a piece of this again just because I want to. I'm going to place that down. Let's say we want to do uh, a little moon, but maybe we want it to be, I don't know, a little offside. That's fine. Got a little craft pick here because I've got those pork chop fingers. I'm just going to leave that. I saved the release paper for this one. I'll place that down and we can go in. I'm going to go in with the dome foam because I do want to do a little, a little blending on this one. Maybe we'll do some, I don't know. It looks like I'm doing blues or green. So take a little salvage patina. Okay. And I'm still just going to hold this. I'm just going to go around here. Yeah. Let's do a little bit of blending. Just working right on there, working from the edge, kind of fading that out. That's perfect. Let's go into a little speckled egg. Same thing. Just kind of create a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more depth in here. Okay. So far, so good. Take that pick, lift that off. Ah, perfect little circle. So even if you're just doing a circle, uh, you're good to go. And then this place this over the top, clean this. You're going to clean it just like you would clean a shifter, which is just a damp paper towel. It's very simple to do with that. Then we can take this layer. And again, you get to decide where you want to position this whole layer. So just go in. I have to separate that because there we go. And like I said, if you like, you know, some type of spray, then you should use that. You really should use whatever medium that you like to work with. Now this is more detailed, so we have options, right? We can certainly go in with uh, the, the dome foam and we can go in there, or if we want something to be just a little bit more uh, detailed or concentrated, we could go in with a brush. So I'm actually going to take, ah, that's what I want. I'm gonna take a little oxide. So let's take some pumice stone and old paper. That'll be cool. And I'm just going to take a, a brush. Still going to hold that. Just do my little swirl motion, create a little detail. Just go in. Excellent. Okay. Then I'm going to also go into old paper. Now I'm not worried about these two colors. They're pretty similar. Plus I used a lot, but really if you wanted to, you can simply swipe it on a baby wipe. If you're going to go from dark to light, uh, it's technically not the same color family, but old paper, like I don't mind if my old paper ink pad gets a little mucky because well, it's old paper, but you can simply swipe that off. So just going in just to capture the details. I like this is going to give me just a, an interesting shade in with that gray. All right. And once we're done with that, so here's what I do. Because I only use one set of brushes, I don't have one dedicated to inks and oxide. I'm just not that person, but if, if that's you, go for it. I just have one set. So anytime I use oxide with a brush, anytime when I'm done, I will always clean it off. And that is just, again, a damp paper towel, a baby wipe. You simply swipe it over the top. So there's no pigment left. It's just color. The dye will always stain the bristles, but there's no more ink. So you can go on a paper towel and see that there's no more color coming out and then it's done. So I know every single time that the brushes that are in my tin are always good to go with either one, right? Cause you can always use them with ink. So that's just kind of my, uh, my tip is never put it away with oxide unless you have a separate set. All right. So we're just going to lift this off. Let's lift off that piece of sticky grid. Put that on the back and there we go. Like again, look at that cool background. Now we can do all the other things that we did with the other. We can add some splatters. Just take a little splatter with some water, create some drips, go in with a paper towel, let it sit there for just a minute. So I'm letting the water drips sit on there and then paper towel lift. Look at that. How simple is that? So great. And I love how the oxides oxidize. 
right? That's what's giving me that effect. And I love how the Distress Ink creates the reaction. Could you do it all in oxide? Yes. All in inks? Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. And you can soften that the same way we did uh, the Harlequin with by adding more water, but we're going to do that with the spray one. So that's a really simple way to create uh, the moon with the moon masks. But now we're going to do one that's just a little, a little bit messier because I like it. Okay. Put that on the back. Move this, move this. Okay. 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 Moving stuff out of the way. Next up, let's do, uh, let's go for this effect, right? This cool, ooh, eerie, wispy effect that uh, Stacy did. I think it's, it's very cool. It was actually easier to do than I thought. I didn't think it would be that easy, but I will say that a couple of them I made a hot mess. So until you find your groove, just trust that. So you're going to want to work with a paper that is going to give you uh, the movement that you're looking for. So if you're looking for more of that kind of creepy, wispy, jiggity jaggedy bit, that's going to be the textured side of watercolor paper, right? You can see how that ink, like it just goes down like a little Plinko machine, right? A little, little ziggity zag. But if you want something that's just a little bit more fluid, almost kind of veiny, if you will, then a smooth kind of paper, and this is just the, the front and the back of watercolor paper, but I'm just talking specifically about texture. If you want something that's just going to have a little bit more fluid movement, then you would want to do this on a smooth part of the paper. And whether that is white heavy stock, mixed media heavy stock, just know that texture and smooth, it's going to make the ink play a little different. They look similar, but they're different to me, right? This has definitely a much more of a fragmented uh, jag, and this one has that kind of cool thing. So I'm going to work on the smooth side. That's just the light, the, the side that I happen to like. Again, I'm just going to take, we'll do a smaller one this time. Place that down wherever you want. I'm just going to offset it because, well, I am a bit offset. So that's going to work for me. We're going to do some sprays now. So I'll take a splat box. Excellent. Take a paper towel. I normally work with a paper towel with sprays because it's going to absorb a lot of the stuff and it doesn't seep uh, as much under the back. But again, you work with what's going to work for you. And let's do, I have an assortment of sprays over here just to talk about uh, what I'm going to work on. And I think what I'll, let's do a little, I'm going to take a little bit of black soot and I'm just going to spray. Okay. That's it. You see just like a little mist just to create that, that dark element. And then I think I will go into, told you, I love uh, shaded lilac when it comes to uh, Halloween time. I don't, I don't know why. It's just very, very electric. But then what I'm going to do for more color is I'm going to go into the mica stain, right? Because the mica stain is still going to give me color, but it's also going to give me shimmer. These guys, we have to shake up. Now you can use mica stains. If you have dilution sprays or uh, shimmer dilutions, use any of the sprays. The whole idea with this technique is the sprays are what's going to create more of that pixelated fluid look, right? You've already seen like how the inks blend, but you see how you get those little, that little pixelated background, but then we also get that movement. That really has to do with using spray. So if you're going to use a, a mica stain, you want to make sure that you shake it until you have no sludge at the bottom. If you don't shake it all the way and you have sludge and you go to use it, it's going to clog. And if it clogs, well, uh, Ranger Cells replacement sprayers, and that's probably what you're going to want. You can always soak them and try to clean it out, but really it's just much easier uh, if you just remember to shake it. So you can see on the mica stain that I'm going in more of like a, I don't know, like a splattery spray, right? I'm not totally saturating the background because I want that Look, if you wanted it to be totally saturated, well then, saturate it. You have to do with the look you're going for. But same thing even on this one's Empty Tomb, which is kind of black with a little silvery look. I think that's going to be cool. And I want this to be a little darker, especially on this side. So I'm going to go back to my uh, black soot. There we go. Just add a little bit there. It's pretty intense stuff. So here's what we have. You guys see that? Okay. That is sprayed on on our initial layer. So I'm going to take that out of splat box, move that out of the way. I have this sludge that's up here. So what I'm going to do just with a paper towel is I'm just going to try to dab off some of the sludge. If you wipe it, you will have a tendency to kind of put ink on the edges and create an outline. And if that's what you're going for, cool. Do you have to do this? Uh, no, but 
we have to remove this. We have to remove the mask before we heat it. Masks are not heat stable. So if you went in with your heat tool and you forget, you're gonna create like a nice little piece of lasagna and you're not gonna find any hack with a book or a microwave oven to flatten that again. You're just gonna to have to get yourself another mask set. So by getting most of that excess stain off, now I can just go in, grab that with my finger, pull that off, right? And now I can clean it. Now I can kind of go in and just do the, the normal clean with a little water, wipe off the rest of it. There we go. So this way I can wipe that because I'm not worrying about getting the color off the edge. And if you needed to really clean it, you can always peel this off, clean it, and then stick that back on. All right. So let's just put the little circle back on. Okay. So here's what we have. So right now we've got a great little spray speckly background. Now we can dry it at this point, right? If we want this color to be saturated, or I'm going to go in and just spray water around this area. Okay. So when I go in and start spraying water and I'm going to be pretty generous, you'll see the magic happen. And then you're just going to go in and start drying it, right? The longer it sits, the more it's going to move. Now, could you go in and blot it? Yes, but you're going to lose all that wispiness. So just dry it. Don't worry. Paper doesn't have a memory. So when it starts to curl, don't freak your freak. Just keep heating it, keep drying it. And you'll watch the paper will start to flatten out again. Now, the more water you add, the more it's going to wick, the less water you add, the less it will wick. Okay. Hmm. So good. Okay. Now I'm a huge fan of the blot. So I'm going to blot off some of that excess. I'll even go in while I'm doing this, splatter some water on here because I want to add, you know, some of that kind of starry effect and also take that off. Look at that paper towel. You can use your, if you have an ink cloth, you can use that as well. But this is what you get. Take a look at that. So now we, oh, wow, we got the mica stain in there. But see, it's not, it's not overly mica Oh, that's still a little wet right there. Let's take that. Ooh, that's even better. It's not overly mica because I use the mica stain in addition to the spray stain. So I'm getting that saturation of color and then that little bit of wisp. So what can you do? Well, if you want to define this, you can always put the solid back on and you can do that. If we wanted to add our little, a little detailed layer, because maybe we want to add a little bit more detail. That's the benefit of this. You can say, okay, well over here, it's pretty dark, but maybe I want to add, I don't know, just a, a cool little, a little shadowy bit. Great. We could go in again with our ink brushes in whatever color you want. I'm going to go back to old paper because it's there. And even though I clean my brush, don't be one of those makers. Don't be one of those makers that because you clean it, you're never going to use it again. I mean, come on, come on, right? That would be like, you know, using a stamp and because you cleaned your stamp, you're never going to stamp with it again. I never get that. You know, if you use it, clean it and then use it again and clean it if you need to. And I'm only cleaning this because I don't want to contaminate my, uh, my ink pads. But other than that, I would have just wiped off if it's just a stamp or a mask. That's all I do. Again, I just test it. Oh, I still see color coming out and you just want to clean that until you don't see any of that oxide color. There we go. It's clean. It's done. We pick this up. Uh, look at that. How cool. And I love that it's kind of under that because again, you get that total control with it. I want to add a little bit more texture to that ink part. So I'm just going to add again, those little splatters of water much smaller. The cool thing about the sprayer, I talk about it every time. If you just slowly squeeze the trigger, see how you get those little bursts. That's the cool thing about this trigger sprayer. And if you see people use the distress sprayer, that is why you have a lot of cool water control with that sprayer to do everything from spray to splatter. So dry paper towel, lift it off and see, it just kind of broke up that little area. See what I mean? And I want to do that again. You could do that every single time again and again, again, just drips, let it sit for a minute, take something porous paper towel, or just anything that you have. And when you lift that off, it just adds those elements. Ah, oh, now I'm a happy guy. Cool. So that's a background. That's the cool thing about the moon masks. And it, it's funny that you just see something, you know, in a package that you're like, all right, what is this? It's like science class. Like, is this like an, an eclipse kind of thing? Ah, eh, no, <laughs> it can be. Certainly could be sun. Maybe you can even do kind of something earthy, whatever. But the whole idea is to take an idea that, yes, um, 
people have done with, with punch out paper and just create a tool that just makes it uh, very user friendly for the maker. So I hope you guys kind of understand that a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit better. Now I'm going to get into the makes and talk about that. Let me just kind of clean up this area and you are going to be just amazed at uh, seeing all of this because you're going to see makes with the moon and with the Harlequin and with all of that stuff. Another thing to keep in mind, if you are going to do paste, I just, I'm not going to demo the paste, but I'll talk about that. Um, you're going to see a, a great card. In fact, uh, this is a card that Sharon created with the moon, but this right here, just to let you know, these paste. So when I created these paste for Halloween, right, even though I called them Grave and Crypt. And we talk about that, and I'm going to talk about the Stampers Anonymous, uh, et cetera, tombstones uh, from last Saturday. A lot of people asked about them. But these colors, even though they're perfect for tombs and, and crypts and all that, they're also the perfect moon tone, right? So just this grave paste, because it is tinted, it kind of has that old papery pumice stone look. You can put paste through that top layer to create the texture. Here, this grit one, because it is translucent, look at how it picks up the color that Sharon did in the moon, but then it has those little black uh, fleckly speckles in there, and that's what's gonna create that added effect with it. So yes, you can, you can use the paste through that top stencil. I always recommend uh, a more of a detailed palette knife. My favorites, these are the, the Distress palette knives. I think when it comes to uh, working with a palette knife, I thought, oh. I don't know what to do with it. I thought I had a whole basket of product. Um, but the, the cool thing about, hmm, I don't know what I did with it. Maybe I put it here, here, here. There we go. These guys, right? So this is what I use. I just like this size. You can see I use it a lot. That's what's going to allow me to go into that moon mask and really add the texture into one area versus a big one. That's just going to be really hard to control because you could have a tendency to smear this off the edge of your mask. So always keep that in mind with palette knives. If you only have one, I recommend at least getting uh, a smaller one to, to work in those smaller areas. All right. And we're off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to it, get it clean real quick. It'll take me just a second and I'll hand it over to you. So that's cool. Good with those. Just get stuff um, out. Okay. Clean this stuff up. Perfect. Put these in there. I just have buckets and baskets everywhere. That's the important thing. Always be, listen, always be a tidy maker, guys. Takes you seconds, even during live. Just gonna spray that real quick. Never need to put that away dirty. That would just be, that would be silly. Okay. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. Are we ready to go? These guys, I'll just save them. I'll just wash and reuse them. I know a lot of people have them for their own colors, and that's good too. So let's get into the makes. We're going to talk about um, just a lot of great ideas to use the Stampers Anonymous sets. I'm going to utilize the sets and bring them in for reference also. So I'll kind of keep this stuff off to the side and try to remember to bring that in in case you guys have uh, questions on the sets. So when it comes to the, the creative make side of things, one thing to keep in mind is um, that sometimes what's old is new, what's new is old, stuff that maybe has been in years past that you kind of forget exists. It's always cool to see stuff uh, this, this time of year. And this was no exception. So last Saturday we had the Sizzix Live and there were several makes that used these and nobody talked to each other. This wasn't part of the plan. This was actually uh, something that we launched last year, but it was very interesting to see people use it and we're like, whoa, yeah, because these are still available, right? They're, they, they're available actually year round um, Why Ted makes it. These are made from Stampers Anonymous. Uh, they, they do laser cut. So this is et cetera. And what et cetera is, it's made out of a material called like thick board. So it's kind of like wood, but it's really paper. It's very thick. It has to be uh, laser cut. And these are the tombstones. So this is the thick board and the tombstone overlay. It comes in a number eight, a mini, and a small. Now, when we say small, small is actually uh, pretty big, right? It's got, you'll see all the measurements on the website, but these are what um, the makers use. So for example, uh, when Zoe created this Sizzix make with the, the crypt paste, right? So cool, all that texture. That was done using this kit because all the pieces, you can see they're already cut and you can take them out and paint them and build them and, and use all your die cut stamps, all your elements. And that was kind of the surface on that. Same with uh, Tammy B, her wonderful, cool little 
uh, candy holders. There's Mario right there. Same thing. So she took that same tombstone, but then she added that little vignette box to the bottom. So this is the ideology vignette to put uh, the candy in. So you can use these for a lot of cool different things when it comes to making. Now for the larger ones, depending on uh, what your what your make style is, Juliana and Emma created these two totally different looks, right? But same thing, that template, that was just using the tombstone. So these, this was done using the mini, right? <laughs> Although it's really big, you just have to remember, this is the mini. But I thought another cool thing, just especially when you look at these, because when I pulled these out, I'm like, wait a minute, like this one is, this is much taller than this one. It's the same set. Well, this is if you have all your pieces flush to the bottom, right? How they're cut. And then Emma just extended hers because she wanted a little bit more height in there. So you get to build these because all the pieces are customizable where you can paint them and, and grunge them and do all of those things. So just something to think about if you've ever seen these and you wonder what they were. Uh, it did create a little bit of confusion last week because people thought it was a Sizzix die. The dies were used on this surface. And then there's some other trims. You'll probably see these, uh, I know, for ideology. This is another cool part of etc. These are trim sets where you get these laser cut spider web ledges, these little stackable strips, and then uh, you also get these bats. So you get um, three sheets of each of the bats and the spider webs, and those create little shelves and ledges. So just something I wanted to, to mention, again, not new, but available. And it seems that, you know, it's always new to someone, right? We see something and it's always going to be new. So here we go. Let's kick off. This first one, I'm just going to go back into uh, to Sharon's card because I really, really love the simplicity of the moon mask, right? This could be something that not just Halloween, this could be that whole love you to the moon and back. It could be an incredibly sweet looking um, idea for this. I think that to me is, is what I absolutely love about working with any imagery is that it can completely change and transform depending on what you're doing. Do you see those little sparkly stars? I'm guessing that's just a little flickering candle. Mica stain, maybe, maybe not. Maybe Sharon has a, another little thing that she used, but I just love it. And I love seeing the incorporation of say die cuts or punches or anything else that you have uh, when you start with a, a new tool. But for me, she had me at that, that paste with those little specks because it was definitely perfect for the moon. So that's just a great card just showcasing the mask. But the first one we're going to talk about is really rest in peace. I have all the makes that revolve around this. You're going to see many of the makers, they just knocked it out of the park uh, by combining different stamp sets. So I tried to sort them just based on, you know, what stamp set it really kind of featured. All of the makers will be on uh, the website following the live. So you can definitely check them out. I say it time and time again, follow them, follow them on social media. They share so many great tips and tricks and techniques throughout the season not just the weekend of live. So if you go right after there and you're like, oh, they don't have the tutorials. They have the entire season to post if they choose uh, to share things. So definitely check it out. But if you go to the blog, you will see all the makes in one spot. Uh, a shout out to Zoe Hillman. She updates all the makers links throughout, uh, throughout the year, really. Anytime that a maker does a tutorial for a make that they do for live, she'll go in and update that. So if you hover over that, that gallery on timholtz.com in that, in that maker section for the launch, and if there's a clickable link, it's gonna take you to a tutorial. So um, this one, gotta talk about, it's just, there we go. I always wanna, gotta get my hand out of the way so the camera resets. This is from Tammy B. And she created this cool casket, just like handmade, not a die, not a template, just a very cool casket using this stamp and using that 3D lumber folder. Look at that effect. Tammy B, I hope there is a tutorial for this. I really hope, I really do. Because there's like some off stamping, right? See how she created that drop shadow by stamping black, stamping white. Um, the coloring on here, that, you know, stamp and paint and stamp and layer, but really that texture, I mean, come on. Like what a cool make. And especially when it's back here on this wood grain, how perfect is that, right? Woo -hoo. So. What could this be? Well, this could be anything. Again, this could be decor. This could stand up. This could be a, a party theme. This could go in the center of a wreath. This could be anything, but it just shows of using stamps on something textured, really, really cool. Because by uh, using this, you're able to actually stamp on something smooth and then use your embossing folders to create uh, that texture. And that's what I love, honestly, about all these makes. They're, they're unbelievable in, 
the idea that was created for the set. So this card, Vicky created this card. What's cool about this, you see how dimensional and layered this looks? It isn't. Completely flat. The magic of masking, right? Uh, and if you follow Vicky on social, she talked about like, you know, taking out those old tricks um, out of the box and remembering that. So remember, you know, cutting out masks, you know, going in and, and taking all the, the different mask sheets and mask material and having mask for your stamps, the ability to layer where it looks like this is on top of this and this is on top of this. This is completely flat, but layering it, if you're not one to fussy cut, it's a good idea to at least cut yourself a set of masks and then you'll never have to fussy cut that image, uh, especially if you layer it. But I love the card. I love using those kind of condemned as that caution tape. Just really cool. And just seeing that, uh, how just adding a little bit of text and of course the detail in the, the rippled and, and tattered paper. Really cool. All right, this one. Love this. Cassie created this. Look at that guy. You know me. I love a good ideology. Creepy eye. Very cool. So this, again, using rest in peace. So cool to go in and cut out and fussy cut that eye socket, that little mouth, just to layer the teeth. Because it just has, he has a whole different expression, right? Just from uh, those additions. These come out in ideology every year, as do the bones, which I love, a little mummy cloth. But again, you can see just using some stamping, little splatters of color, some ephemera. I love the look of it. And this is what's so cool about all that different typography, right? Taking some of those elements and just utilizing them different. So here was the Red Cross. This one, Vicky focused on the Condemned and that little pharmacy. And Tammy used the Casket Company. So that's often the thing when it comes to a stamp set that has all these extra elements. Do you need to use them all? No. Can you? Of course you can, right? But it's cool that you have options to really switch up how the make looks by, by adding that. The other great thing, uh, Zoe created this, Zoe Hillman. I love seeing, again, that imagery can be used in all sorts of different ways. It doesn't have to be on the front of a card. I'm a huge fan of number eight tags. So yes, when I scale the images, I always want to scale them so they work great on a number eight tag. Here, this is layered. This is actually fussy cut, serious uh, detail. Love the stitching around the edge. Love the addition of the chain on that tag. But again, layering your pieces and using part. Cool thing about this, you've got the other half. You got the other half of that skull for a whole nother make. So that's something to keep in mind when you are layering pieces. Some people find fussy cutting very therapeutic, very relaxing. So stamp images, color images, cut them out, but then don't think that you always have to fit it right in the center of something. So I think that that's really a, a great thing to keep in mind when you're adding things to cards or tags or bookmarks or any kind of uh, collage work that you do. And I love seeing just how that pops on that grunge background. And you'll see there's so many different different ways. Barbara created this one. So again, we talk about like fragmenting or part of something, right? So this is done. You can see, well, you can tell this is a little bit of collage paper, right? So use that and stamp the image. But even if you didn't want to do the collage paper, you could just ink up part of the stamp and stamp that down. But you'll see there's that Harlequin, right? See that shifter? This was a very cool way to use the shifter because when you see that one layer is textured, right? With the Halloween grip paste and one layer was inked. So a very cool way to shift where uh, now we're getting the ability to shift with texture and color. And I think that's a great effect. And the thing about stencils, remember, it does not have to be start to finish the whole thing. You put down that stencil, put stuff wherever you want. There's some here, some here, a little down there, and then do all of your magic. And then you can see there's that little addition of the moth study right there. Now there's a lot of Stampers, you'll see a lot of these makes use stamps from last year and even previous years. So it's definitely something to keep in mind that takes stuff out of your stash. See what you have in your collection that you can tie into um, creating a whole new look for, for this year's release, right? Really cool. I love, I love mixed media, right? So Zoe with a Y, so we have Zoe and Zoe with a Y. Zoe with a Y created this. Again, look at all the texture in there. I'm just gonna try to tip that card just to see. You can see a lot of crackle in there. Just, I love the smear of this. This, that little torn look of, of the paper when it's collaged over the top, like all those little ripples that you would get. Sometimes if we're doing any kind of collage with like collage paper, we don't want it to, or this might just be white tissue paper if it, if it tore like that. That's another cool thing to embrace is those little added textures, especially for something grungy with Halloween. 
I love the look of this. I love all the layers of imagery. So see even that weird text on the bottom that I talked about where it talks about the bones and nerves and muscles. Yes, it's one stamp, but look how cool it is just right here, just stamped as just random text. Stamps are tools. Use it for floating imagery wherever you want. And of course, these elements are ideology, little quote chip, using a little bit of ephemera from past collections. That's really great. Love the, the mixed media style. And that's what you're gonna see from the makers. Everyone has a completely different look or aesthetic. Yuko created this card. Oh my gosh, you know that I'm a fan of that technique that Yuko does where it's got the color and then it's sprayed and it's all wicked out. Look at that. See, I mean, the skull has a completely different effect from when it's focused to where it's got that little blur. One of my favorite stencils in the back, that whole little splattering look with some texture paste, so rusty and grungy. And then of course that, that casket company that's offset. I remember this technique that Vicky did with like the metallic over the black. I think it might even be like a, a stays on metallic. Just very, very cool to see that, that little bit of rust and grunge, mm, right? I'd want this as wallpaper, would you not? I would, yeah. I, I'm always loving that technique. And that's a thing to remember about stamps. And I, I try to always throw these in. Sometimes I sound like a broken record because I say it again and again. I remember when I started stamping that to me, a stamp needed to be totally crisp in focus. It always needed that detail. And throughout the years, you realize that, wait a minute, that stamp looks great detailed, but it also looks amazing when you can blur it out or fuzz it out, especially when you have a red rubber stamp that already has captured so much detail that even blurring it, it still provides a great image. So always remember that if something smears or you drop a stamp or it drips, embrace your imperfection, embrace imperfection and just kind of go for it and see what it is that you create. So Colbert created this, look at this card, like a, it's just a giant slim line. It's huge and I love it. I love the, the effect of this because again, we've got that great crackle that crackle paste through the stencil, that's what's creating like the crackle on crackle. I don't know if that's great or grim. Didn't we talk about this stencil before? I think it's in here. I gotta look to see. I'm guessing it's going to be, it might be this crackle one. Yeah, this might be, I think, a 129. I'd have to match it up, but I'm kind of thinking like, yeah, you can take a crackle stencil and crackle paste and you can create a very cool, um, background effect, but there you go. There's that fussy cut skull, love his yellow teeth. I love the moth study. So many makers did moths with uh, this skull. And then again, leaving yourself some landing space in that texture to add elements onto a card. Very cool. The other thing that I think about this industry that I'm absolutely so happy we've kind of broken through that mold, which would be like regulation card size right? You know, we talk about A2s and we talk about this. No way. You can create a card, any shape, any size, any tag, anything you want, even this, right? With an image, you do what your imagination is telling you to do, right? So as you're working on stuff, just start with that template with based on whatever it is that you want to create. You don't have to kind of fit in that mold of, okay, that's, that's the size that I need to stick to, unless you have a certain uh, envelope that you have to fit in. But then you could be Tifa and you could just create your own, your own envelopes and then you're, you're good to go. Juliana created this background over alcohol ink. So look at that really cool drippy wood grain kind of look and then stamp that image uh, on Yupo. Very beautiful, very subtle, and very easy to achieve. So this is very cool if you're just gonna drag and swipe your alcohol inks do your background with your grungy paper and do your layers. I love this. And you can see that that sketchy image is perfect for backgrounds like this because it just enhances that grunge. So sticking into a color palette, well, you could tell why I would like it because it's brown on brown on brown on brown. But by switching up your mediums, that's where things really become very cool. This is alcohol ink. But look in the background, this is the mica stain. This is crooked broomstick. So you could see a little bit of that shimmer back there and you don't have to saturate the whole thing. Embrace the space, right? Having that little bit of white space really helps bring your eye into this focal point of the alcohol ink. And the, the beauty of working with alcohol ink is you can completely change the dynamic. Paula created this card with alcohol inks. I love the fact that it's got an alcohol inked background. Now, if you ever work with alcohol ink and whether you work with mixatives or alloys and you have metallic in your background, if you try to stamp over these metallics, it's very challenging because your ink does not want to transfer over a lot of mixative or alloy. And I thought this was a great 
solution. Take a transparency, stamp on a transparency, and layer that over your background. So here, Paula stitched that over the top. It does a couple things. One, it provides almost this like floating, very dimensional, like can you see, at least for me, I see that skull really layered over the background. It has a, a completely different depth to it and it just provides a different look. And again, you can go in and, and do your transparency. Look at these little details. These are all those little, these are the tags in Moth Study that she went in and just kind of fussy cut and stitched it on like little tags with a little pin, just a, a great little detail. But two beautiful alcohol ink cards, two completely different ways to approach them. Right? So if you do alcohol ink backgrounds and maybe you struggle stamping over the top of it, or maybe you're a little nervous, right? You don't want to freak your freak and, and worry about your stamp smearing or smudging or ruining your background. What a great solution. The stamp on a transparency, you don't like it, get another transparency. But you're not going to mess up your background because you have the ability to, to layer on your perfect one and then stitch it. So I love seeing a completely different use of the same medium by different makers. Speaking of different makers, I did a shout out at the beginning. So um, Alberto, he is he is a maker that I follow who is just a genius at coloring. Would never even attempt this. He is a, a Copic genius. Um, he has a very clean and simple side, but I love the fact that uh, when I reached out to him, he accepted the challenge. I'm like, I would love for you to make for Stampers Anonymous. I would love it, but I don't think I designed stamps that kind of fit your, your jam. And he's like, are you kidding? challenge accepted. And so you're going to see his cards. He has a totally distinct style. You're going to see that. But what he can do with an image and transform the image, because he does start with a stamped image, because I, I message him like, are these even my stamps? Because they don't look like that. And he's like, nope, they're, they're your stamps. So he does all of his coloring with Copic. But seriously, same skull, moth. Wow. That's like, I, I am such a fan of that. I just seriously that's just next level coloring he does a, a lot of great uh, inspiration and education on instagram so uh, definitely check out the makers page he's he's linked first it's alphabetical order so <laughs> there you go alberto i love this thanks for agreeing to make thanks for taking on the challenge and more importantly thanks for doing you right thanks for not changing your style to match the imagery i think that really says a lot to anyone that has a specific artistic style that it shows the, the complete different potential of a stamped image and that you can take any image and make your own by, by staying true to what you do. Because even these moths, they just, they're beautiful little butterflies with detail. So unbelievable coloring on that card. And that kind of, it was, it's always interesting to see like, you know, almost even the, the rainbow trend or the rainbow vibe with things. Uh, Jen created this. Very cool to just do a, a rainbowy skull background and still use the image. So there again, if you're if you don't do Copics or you're not, you know, that level of color, but you love to add color to an image, this is this is great to go in and, and do a colorful background, stamp an image. If you ever want your image to, to pop, there's a little embossing right there. That embossing powder layers, you can go in and fussy cut that and then just put that on a, a black and white base. So I love seeing that kind of rainbow that Jen did. And I'm just gonna put these here because I've I've set them up into a little series to see how you can take color to so many different levels, right? So Cobera created this card. Again, another big, beautiful card. But look at how she took the new skull and then she paired it with those floral outlines from the June release, right? I love those outline florals, but look at how wispy. And so many makers used uh, this stamp set from our last release in June with Halloween. And I love, love seeing that. But here you can see much more of a vintage collage style a little grungy, a little gritty, and I love that, but still very, very colorful on this card, especially with all the layers. So when you see those, isn't that just, it's always so amazing to, to see a stamp transformed into that, depending on your artistic style. That is what these lives are all about. To see something that you might look uh, at a picture, you see it online, you're like, eh, I don't know. Watching, watching videos, whether you're watching this live or on the replay and seeing the inspiration, that to me is, is the heartbeat of the industry, is allowing people to totally celebrate who they are, their creative style, and the fact that any artistic su supply can be transformed into that style if you just trust your style and you do you. So Anita created this one, again, talking about adding flowers and layers. I love this, it definitely has kind of a, 
just a, a very cool Day of the Dead vibe. And you'll see that the background, love seeing stamps used as backgrounds. That's the other thing when you're like, what do I ever do with all these text pieces? You can just stamp them to create a background pattern. Stamp that image and emboss, do a little masking. And I love seeing all of uh, those florals. Again, that little bit of mica for the shimmer. There's the moth study. So yeah, masking seemed to be like the thing this time. Because again, the only thing layered on here is this guy, this one moth. All these other ones, these are all masked and layered over the background, right? Very cool. And don't forget embossing, right? Just that simpleness of adding black embossing powder, especially on a card like this, adding different elements provides a different level of reflection. So we've got the shimmer from the mica stain, and then we've got that shine from the embossing. And it does make your image pop anytime you're doing that. And remember when you're embossing, there's a couple of options. You could stamp in clear and use black embossing powder. That would work. But you can also stamp in black. So you could take, say, black soot archival ink stamp, and you can still emboss. So if you want it really, really dark, stamping in black ink and embossing again in black will ensure that your image is solid. So if you've ever tried to do that and use black embossing powder, but it still looks a little uh, kind of speckly in there, if you start with black ink, and yes, uh, archival, Distress Archival, well, all the archival links are oil-based, so you can emboss with them. So just a little tip on that. I love the effect. This one, just stunning. Emma created this one. Again, isn't it crazy that three different makers all had that same kind of florally idea uh, for the skull? But look at that. We talk about the importance of just adding that subtle detail, right? And look at that little embossing with metallic. It completely changes those flowers. They just, they look totally different. Just going in, doing all of your uh, detail embossing with a metallic on your background, especially over the black, and then just going in and coloring. This looks a little bit like Perfect Pearls, probably add a little pearlescent shimmer, doing your cutting and layering. But isn't that beautiful? I love that, her immortal beauty. And look at that little, there you go. There you go, P, little ideology, uh, tiny clip on there. But such a stunning card because it has a completely different effect over that black cardstock, right? Just again, just different, different, different. I'll pull this one in. Again, makers that took the skull florals. It doesn't have to be this floral stamp. It could be any kind of florals and see how you utilize it in different ways, whether you're stamping and doing kind of that uh, airbrushy, almost watercolor or going in very detailed with shimmer or putting that on black. Always amazing that makers can kind of channel those ideas, but yet still doing their own thing, right? Now, Speaking of doing their own thing, right? That's the thing. Natifa, Tifa just does these envelopes. So Juicy Christians, if you if you don't follow her on Instagram again, uh, she does a lot of envelope tutorials. But again, another maker that we approached and said, love for you to, to make for stampers, but do you, like do your envelopes, do your thing. And this one, I gotta say, really, really stepped them up, wild. I love seeing the effect. So I'm just gonna talk about some details that I noticed. Uh, she shares a lot of detail, so you follow her on social. She she often just videos. We we talk about that even in our makers meets of like I would never turn on a camera and film the process start to finish because I don't know how it's going to work yet. Yet she does. So here we've got the envelope, right? Black cardstock, or maybe it's even black painted, probably because it feels a little thicker watercolor. That maybe she did some black paint on there first. Love the splattering of the mica stain. You can see all those colors, but then you see all that wonderful black shimmer. That is that the mica flakes for Halloween, that kind of mica dust where you got the big pieces and the small pieces. That skull is kind of floating in there. We can see the moths. It's almost very black light. When I first saw this, I'm like, oh, it's very cool. And then seriously, you know it. She put tiny lights in here. So, um, Mario, I don't, I'm going to see if this is going to show up. Oh, it does. All right. I was going to say, we might have to even cut the lights. Maybe, can you just cut the studio lights and see what happens if they're behind me? Oh, that, oh uh, yeah, that definitely helped. There we go. No, this is good. So she put in the purple tiny lights from Halloween. I'll go in and shut them off too, just so you can kind of see with it. I'm trying to not take it off, off camera. There we go. I've got the little thing. There we go. Off and then on. Oh my gosh. And I know there's reflection in my shirt, but she'll probably take better photos. But look at that. How cool to have that layered inside there. And you can see that uh, the purple tiny lights, these, these purple ones only come out at Halloween for ideology. So if you love this effect, 
you definitely want to stock up on tiny lights but i love the addition of that mica and how it reflects and then again just the use of that pen i don't know what kind of pen that is but it is it's like that whole uh, black light board and how everything glows and just the the detail cut so cool right with the lights and just again an envelope that is art art in and of itself so very cool make something completely different with with the skulls love it all right so cards we're just going to continue with ideas because there's so many different ideas for this so joy created this card this is a shaker card the whole background is a shaker so you can see it's like a little uh acetate pocket on the background and look at all the the glitter in there the little sequence that kind of shake around and then we've got that great skull and then this any movie fans totally silence of the lambs right all right with that whole moth over there but really cool i love that background you know me i like all the shaky shaky but the fact that the entire card is in there it's like a little seal meal it's cool just you can even hear it all just moving around and all the different elements but a very cool use to to use that as a focal point and then have that little accent it's really cool now if this kind of freaked you out with Silence of the Lambs, I'm telling you right now before I bring in the next make, if you have an issue with clowns, just look away for the next few minutes because I'm just prefacing some people can handle clowns and some people it will freak your freak. I'll admit I'm a little freaked out, but I embrace the idea. All right. So you ready? I'm just prefacing so everyone can like look away, close your eyes. I'll let you know when it's over. This is a card that Nico created and it was like, oh my gosh. It is so creepy, so cool, so clever using the skull. Look at that crackle nose that he's got on there. That extra detail work, the addition of just that hair and that rosette collar. Oh my heck. Like, what? Yeah, some people, like especially at Halloween, they're like, bring this on. Like, that is pure cool creep. But look at the background. I love seeing the bold fright in the background stamp with this. And then this whole thing layered. It's very, very cool. I absolutely love it. I think it's really a very clever way to work with uh, an image. I think that's the, the whole idea of creating that. These makers just, they see something. They're inspired to, to design and create what pops into their head. And they need to do them. That's what I love. Yep. Creepy cool but it is amazing agree yeah that's the thing that's how you leave a nice comment you don't have to be a fan of it but you can still appreciate the idea right so there you go all right clown free zone going back in the thing to remember about images is that any stamp set even if it's halloween themed you have to appreciate the imagery that comes with it right so if you recognize the the hat and collar zoe created this tag and i really am, am grateful that uh, again she still embrace that style but this, this is what it's all about. I talk about this a lot, uh, even with Paula when I, I do stamps, because I love to pack a lot of ephemera in there. Because there's often that I'll use these things that have nothing to do with Halloween. So you also need to keep that in mind, that if you look at stamp sets, pull out that old typography from previous sets, especially if you're doing everyday collage work. And so I do love this background. I love that, that scratch stamp. That's one of the classics. Love seeing all that back there that condemn that goes across the top and then just little details. That's the, the great part of working with this is that you have this little type slide stamp that's cut out. You've got the layers here. You've got little bits of the metallic from a 3D folder. There's a lot of cool things that you can create. Oh, I should open Nico's card. Oh boy. Okay. I don't often open cards, but we interrupt this because we got a message that I should open Nico's card. So let me just set this down again. We're going back to the clown. Look away. I don't know. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I never open cards. Oh, no. Yeah. If you know the, the movie, there you go. Well played, Nico. Yeah. For those movie fans, you'll know. That, that made this card even that much more disturbing. Yeah. That's the thing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. I, see, I, that one's going to probably have to go out outside. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, not right now. I see. I love a good creep, though. I really do. All right. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks for saying that because we would we totally would have missed that. That's good. So when you're when you're layering detail on an image and even again, going back to the card, I won't I won't bring that in. But those little details, they really matter, especially to the recipient and especially to you as a maker. Um, 
like for example, those little label stickers that, that Nico used. Having these pieces and how Zoe used this, those little snippets of a, of a 3D folder, that is the importance of always remembering that any kind of supplies are tools, right? And so many times we'll look at them and be like, oh, nope, I'm out. It's like, okay, yeah, you might be out of this, but look at all this cool stuff you missed. Now, maybe you don't like any of the other stuff, but if you're really into uh, very cool typography, especially if you're doing stuff that has a, a cool steampunk look to it, that imagery is key and always go back into those old stamp sets and see that. And sometimes people like to organize their stuff by season where they're like, oh, I put all my Halloween in something and I put all my Christmas. Certain things that kind of works, but when it comes to stamp sets, a lot of times there's great imagery that will work on so many other type of, of cool makes, all right? Love that, cool tag. So this one, Paula created something like this for Christmas, I think uh, maybe it might've been last year, even a couple of releases ago. And again, another very cool effect of taking all those different background stamps, stamping them in different colors, giving them a little spritz, doing a little smudge on the background, but creating a beautiful, colorful background simply by layering stamp after stamp after stamp. And that's what it is. You'll see the casket, the poison, the numbers, and just by switching your ink colors. And then we've got, again, that image masked as well. Like so many makers did masking this time. Some people did fussy cutting, but I love kind of seeing that masking come back. This is a classic Halloween stamp. This is an old school one. I love it. But again, you can still get it. And just how it's stamped and embossed on vellum and then just kind of scorched it looks like and just twisted and just I love it the little detail of mummy cloth and yeah the little touch of a vintage right there a little mummy cloth on the card but that's another great idea for backgrounds whether you're doing uh, a layer just for a vintage effect or whether you're using different colors very cool on the background all right one more make for this stamp set and then we're going to move on to another one and this is a tag that Zoe created I love seeing the casket company. Very cool, kind of how from a from a casket that we had two makers that just played on the whole idea of a casket. Tammy B created this whole big casket shape. Zoe created this, and when I saw this, I totally recognized this because this is a this is retired though. This is a retired Sizzix die. I did a coffin box, and I love seeing that box done. This is the lumber 3D folder, but she did that 3D. It's like just the box lid from the box. You can see that cool crackle in the background, right? can see the ledge there's that drippy candle from this stamp set right see those little candles right there so you can mix and match something cute and also something a little little disturbing there's the undertaker look at the detail just in that casket company with the the ideology hardware heads where you can take an image frame it with just an, a little bit of metallic tape and just give it a whole different effect i love that crackle through the stencil that is again another older stencil but still current because it's Stampers Anonymous, so they still make it. But look at that crackle paste to that damask stencil. So beautiful. And you see this? You guys ready? Oh, you know it. Seriously, tiny lights behind that. That is eerie. Cool, creepy. Some people love to get their creep on for Halloween. This certainly gets your creep on. Um, because this die is retired, I'm sure you could find some sort of template to cut a coffin box, but I, I love seeing just how that's folded on there and a great idea to house tiny lights and and have that layer in there you scare me i agree it's really it's cool um just using the lid because the coffin box was really really deep but having that lid yeah that's a that's a creeper for sure but i do love that so again just kind of seeing just how we can go from uh, very frightful i'll just put that just over there just in the corner <laughs> uh, very frightful very cool and beautiful i mean i'd even go as far as to call this like psychedelic with that the black light which i absolutely love seeing just a whole vintage nostalgic look of them a very classic blended look a beautiful almost day of the dead look with the florals there's so many different i don't know aspects of this one set and the potential of how how you can even get your creep on or maybe you just want to go with something that's just a, a little beautiful, little colorful rainbow. There's no, there's no right or wrong to a stamp. A stamp set is limited to, to really your imagination. All those What's ideas, on on one set. He's, he's over there. Put him back in. He's over there. Right on top of belongs. All right, there we go. That was without warning because Mario, peer pressure. All right. So let me just move this out of the way. 
and we'll move on to the next. Very cool, right? Inspiration. Absolutely. Absolutely love the inspiration. Really the tiny lights in the envelope, everything in there, just really very cool. Well done, makers. Just, oh gosh, this is so frontier land. Tammy B, like, I, have, I love that. Okay. All right. Moving on. So we did, we, we got through a set, you guys. <laughs> Next, we're going to talk about moth study. And the cool thing about this is the makers really did so many different things. S definitely surprised me because um, certainly there are people that channeled the whole moth study specimen side of this, but then many of them use it in, in a playful Halloween style, which I thought was, was really great. So we'll start with Zoe with a Y. She created this it's just a beautiful little specimen book again using moth study i love the size of this these are very small they're they're small little moths you can see just from a, a sheet of stamps if you have any stampers anonymous you can pretty much get the scale three rows so many stamps packed onto this set so a shout out to mr stampers anonymous for always allowing me to just pack in as much imagery as i want on a set because i love the detail like even that little type slide that was on zoe's tag those little details are cool so Zoe with a Y created this again, using those little number stamps from that moth study and just doing little collage pieces. So whether you're doing inking, oxide, stitching, fussy cut, torn little elements of mummy cloth and tissue, doing those really cool, I love this kind of washer eyelet. I love those. Those are very cool. You need to get more into eyelets. I think we talked about that. Uh, but sewing all of these cool little cards and just changing up that moth study. This could be something like a little swatch book like this. These could be mounted onto a frame. These could be in the center of a card. But again, just because it's released at Halloween, if you're completely into that entomology and insect, this is a great set to work with because again, the detail, unbelievable in these stamps. Even all that small little element into the wings. See, there's that little, those little stamps that are part of that set, right? The little number one. They make great additions, great layers. There's that little type side stamp. So when you start to look at these, you'll notice all the little details in there from collage paper to torn bits of ephemera and layers. So beautiful. I love the color palette too, right? But just seeing all these pieces, I love the little stitch, right? Got to do more with my sewing machine. I always say that. I have a lot to do. I'm so inspired after these as well, just to create that. And then this of course is that, that little wire ring that you can go in and just create that book ring, little tassel of some mummy cloth and the velvet trims from Ideology. Just love it. It's just such a great detail for the make. And then of course, a little story stick also from Ideology 365. So just a, a cute little make, right? So think about that when it comes to working with your stamps, how you want to, to create and, and play with those. This next card, very cool specimen. Juliana created this. Look at this card. Look at this whole little kind of specimen tray or specimen box. Now, I'm just taking a guess. I could be totally wrong on this, but this background looks like maybe she used the, the stack tiles die to kind of create this. I'm not sure if, if Juliana is still in here, but this kind of looks like maybe the stack tiles were placed to kind of create this framework, that foundation to create that shadow box, right? Stacked and layered. I just think it's really beautiful that you can lift off the top and you can see here that's the 3D lumber just done on cardstock to really give it that nice chunky wood grain. This is just using, looks to me like a little uh, alcohol ink foil tape on there to create those hinges with some fasteners just to open up that card. And then look at that. Look at all of those little boxes. Maybe that, I don't know. I don't, this could be stack tiles. Like, because there's some little squares right there. But I love all of these little areas. And all of these are layered. They're all fussy cut. They're dimensional with a little foam. But so beautiful to kind of see all of those little elements and seeing the toadstool stamp set back. Again, I love seeing those, the extra imagery, right? Those little seals that I talked about. We're like, what do you do with those little ones? Paul used them as tags. You see just in the background, it just adds a little interest. That's why I always love little bits of typography, numbers, has some great interest. And then of course the inking and the shadow box. So yes, this could definitely be done uh, with entomology stamp set as well as moth specimen. But I thought what a, a very clever way to create a cool card, especially for someone that, that loves nature or organic. I think it's really, yeah, pretty amazing. 
Very cool in that moth study. Kath created this card with that moth study. I love the effect of this because again, look at that image just used as a watercolor, right? So when you're stamping, whether you're stamping with stains or whether you're spraying your stamps after you ink it up, creating that beautiful distortion. This is what I was saying that even when an image is kind of wicked or blurred, you can still see and identify what that is. But I love that effect right here where even all the images that are watercolored, then you go in and stamp it a second time on top to provide that detail. There's a little embossing right there, but very cool because that becomes your focal point, your number one, that area right there. Very beautiful card. Love the background of colors of just taking those and creating your own pattern with those moths and then having the focal point with the watercolor and all the drips. Again, that little bit of white space. And then there's our velvet trim. And I love seeing that, the tiny text. See a lot of tiny text in these makes. But you'll see like the cards are so different from, from style, from maker to maker. Vicky created this one. I mean, look at the, the texture and effect on this. It always has such an industrial vibe. There's this really, really heavy, I mean, it's like linen. It just kind of feels like, this is kind of like ideology, uh, looks like sticky canvas, but there's definitely a texture on there, like texture paste pushed into that fabric. So see how it goes from a texture that's stitched into like that smooth area. There you can see that Harlequin shifter. So even something as subtle as black and gray, that's the benefit of a shifter stencil is that you don't have to worry about which diamond you like control the color in. You can simply shift the pattern and you can create that effect. Love seeing field notes. This is uh, another stamp set, that big label in the back and then pairing that with moth study. So if you have that field note stamp set or even if you have the ideology ephemera, a great thing to layer that new moth study and of course, some little ideology elements from a game spinner. There's another tiny clip. Love seeing that half tag. Just, it's all the grungy, gritty detail and just seeing that whole monochrome with the grays and black and taupe and neutrals on that card, right? Very cool card. Because again, Halloween set, it's released at Halloween. Cool birthday card, cool friend card. Anyone that is just into uh, that look. I love it. I love it, love it. This one, I have to say, I was impressed. Keisha, shout out to Keisha because this one I'm like, oh, this is this is Keisha's because Keisha is usually bright and colorful and I love seeing uh, this very classic, beautiful, simplistic card because that to me is what always makes a stamp set uh, stand out to me when I see a whole different look for that. So here you can see that the moth study is embossed on that background, but I love just that accent of, just looks like a little either either gold metallic wax or something over the background just to give it a little bit of sheen. And then look at that gold sparkly glitter that she embossed with on the bold frights. I put a spell on you. And I always love that, you know, Keisha goes in, she just kind of adds her own little sentiments. Anita's done that as well, just uh, cutting out little snippets of words to just tell a story with, with imagery. But very beautiful, very classic with just that gold and black on there and that little bit of sparkle in that embossing powder. Isn't that beautiful? Yep. In the middle of the night, I put a spell on you. There's no possible escape. I know, but so cool to see that stamp set, just how those moths on the background, that's just really what caught my eye. I'm like, look at that. Wait a minute. That's, that's a background pattern just using embossing powder. Like really cool, right? All right. Kath created this tag. Again, I love the idea. And Kath does this a lot of times where, you know, she'll create maybe backgrounds or stuff and she'll often use uh, pieces or the same palette from a background, but give it a completely different look. So here you can see there's that moth study stamped. There's some solid painting in there, another outline stamping, and then just some accents with pen, right? That pen work just to really make those thick and dimensional, even though they're all part of the same background, but then adding some stamped elements and then little cutout pieces, don't forget to fly on a tag. So again, taking that and changing the whole dynamic and look from those two makes and just saying, okay, I've got this, maybe I have a little extra background, let me cut that off, right? I think that to me is, is always the beauty when it comes to working with your pieces. Just keep playing with what you have and you'll be amazed of, of what you create. This next card Anita created, I love seeing, there's our moon mask in the corner. I thought this was just really a playful vibe on this because there's a lot of different ideas. Here we've got the that set, the Halloween doodles, right? You can see that she took the pumpkin, she took the hat, did a little face on there, it's cute. But I love seeing the moon and then kind of the moths are just like 
flying away, grabbing the string and just floating that, that pumpkin, Halloween magic spell. Isn't that great? I love seeing that background. Very beautiful. You can see just that little subtle sparkle of the mica stain on there. It's just beautiful. Again, the moon mask in the corner was like that whole focal point of a card, right? So when you, when you see those masks, remember they don't have to go right in the middle and you can really just dream up whatever, whatever idea you have for working with it. But I love seeing the moths just kind of on those strings. Very, very clever. Love the story, right? That's what it's about. Now, when I saw the rainbow, Keisha created this one as well, but now that pop of color, I get that. And I love seeing, again, there's our skull from Rest in Peace. I love how she kind of like formed it and molded it. You can see, see that paper? That's another great thing about like sculpting things like that. So placing it down and going in and giving it that extra texture and shape and contour. What are you going to be for Halloween? Fabulous, right? Very, very cool using your die cuts to add a word that you need, print out statements from your from your computer, but then there, there's the moss study in its little rainbow glory, right? Just cut out and use as a little, little headpiece. Beautiful. There's that condemned. So even just that subtle detail. Embossing powder, it's all these little tricks that I try to, to remind you of, right? As makers, we have all these little supplies and you just kind of forget like, man, just stamping black on black and embossing, it creates that great effect. Just adding a die cut out of little metallic cardstock, just splattering a little, you know, whether it's mica stain or perfect pearls or wax or anything just to add elements and then utilizing your images in different ways, cutting out of your color backgrounds or just going in and doing your coloring, but very cool ideas for this. Then we have another envelope, another envelope from Tifa. This, that whole, I don't know what it is. It's, it just has such a cool vibe. Look at the texture in there, guys. So this one, there is moss in there. There's moss and mica. Oh my gosh. There's more of that kind of neon color. These are all rubs. If you, if you see the background of here, I think she used like an entire pack of remnant rubs, but I love that because it gives it such a cool resist. Look at the detail of this. I, I like that it's kind of this cloche in here. We've got that base, the cut dome, the little shine. And yes, this one, again, some tiny lights in there. Love that little bit of tiny lights. And these, ah, uh, look at that. They're just like, I don't know, they just light up a little, so magical in there. Just how they kind of come through the paper in certain areas and just how it's framed around there. But you can see that that mica, right? See that Halloween mic in there, that cool gray underneath that moss. Oh my gosh. So cool. And these moths are underneath this piece of acetate. So what a great use for moth study as well. Nothing uh, is really like impossible with these. You can have something that's grungy, gritty, industrial, colorful, whimsy. I think it's just beautiful to see everybody's interpretation of that. And really way to step it up with the lights, man. You know, I'm a fan of tiny lights. <laughs> I really am, but really light up an envelope. Who knew? Yep. Fascinated by that. But just, I mean, I'll just pull in just a couple of these. There's still more to go through, but just seeing like these few takes and I'll just, you know, grab some pieces here. There's just so many different takes so far for a moth, right? Some people might look at this and be like, why would I want all these bugs? Well, because they could become little butterflies or beautiful things when, when you're working with that. Unbelievable from, the, from that. Very cool. This is starting to fall over. Cassie created this. Look at this card. Look at this color. Oh, I love that with the sprays. Cassie creates so many cards that she shares on social. I love seeing that little bit of crackle paste through. This is a stencil, I think, from last year with that script. Fussy cut and coloring of the moths. Put on that little bit of mummy cloth. Cut out those little numbers. We've got the little hardware, little fasteners that are kind of dented up with the hammer. Collector of Curiosities, those are ideology quote chips, but again, just background. So often when you're, if you're into background mode, and we talk about that a lot when you're doing inky backgrounds and all of that, this is the time to pull out those backgrounds and say, all right, I'm going to create that as a, as my focal point for my card. Maybe I'm going to add a little, little scrap of washi tape. We all have tons of washi tape. Um, this is just a great thing. Use it just to tear it apart, like create little fragments of that. Add little bits of imagery over there. Look at the little spider web that just kind of creeps in there right? Add your elements in there. You can even stamp, if you don't want to go in and color, you can stamp on your backgrounds and then cut those out. There's just so many great details of, of creating a card with elements that you probably made 
from backgrounds in the past just by layering up. I just think that the colors and yeah, the whole composition of this card, it's just, it's beautiful. But there's so many ideas, so many ideas for cards. Yuko created this card. Again, you can see that spider web. This is another one. I think this is from last year, one of my favorites. And I love seeing that moon. Now look at that moon in the back. Very, very drippy, right? Very wet. You've seen that from the demo, that adding water just kind of creeps in there. But then you're going to see a lot of added detail. These are die cut. This is a, an old die. This is a birch branch die. This was a background that you can cut apart. There you can see uh, the color eyes, right? The candlelight. So we just launched these last last Saturday for Sizzix. And I love seeing those candle dies used in conjunction with the stance because now you have those moths just kind of flying out uh, of that window or flying in. I think it's very, very cool and creepy. And you see that little bit of sparkle back there, those little diamonds. Yep. That is the black glitter, that black distress glitter. It just looks like diamonds in there. But what a beautiful card to incorporate stamps, die cuts. Again, another thing as a maker, if you don't know how to utilize all the stamps or you're not sure, you don't like to do fussy cutting, well, you can cut out some things and then use die cuts for other elements. So a, just a beautiful card with that. And yeah, I think just that that wet moon, yeah, that Stacy shared. I, I love how, I love seeing all the different all the different pieces of this. So Emma created this card. Look at how cool this one is too with the skull and then the eyes. Now, these are the creepy eyes you saw um, that Cassie did the creepy eyes, but this Emma just kind of popped out just the center of that creepy eye and stuck it on there. <laughs> I love this. It's so cool. But there you can see all the moths that go around him, all the different colors. That casket company, you can see that gold Metallic, that's a background stamp of a damask. So it's cool that like Zoe did the damask with the, the paste. Emma did this with the stamp and the embossing. And then of course, all that, all that wonderful stitching detail with all the little threads. There's some cool design tape just to add some elements on there. But it's really all that colorful detail of each of these moths going in and adding the little dots, the little details to each one, really changing up the colors and how these are attached to the card, right? The whole thing about this you only have to glue on the body. You can use your shaping kit uh, to shape the, the wings or just give them a little bend. And to me, that just adds so much more dimension. And look at how she's added that skull onto the card as well, just going in and cutting that out and creating that little bit of a contour. I love those, the big cards. I always say like the size cards, right? But again, this set, just looking at the moths has so many different ways to incorporate on cards. Everything from colorful to to little books or working with a die cut or if you go in for something industrial or something rainbow or they're part of another story or if you're going to create a, a very cool botanical vibe with it or you're just going to go in with like simplicity of a background or you really want to kind of embrace that whole entomology thing that's the beauty when it comes to this particular stamp set is that you have so many cool ways to work with it on all types of cards envelopes tags little mini books so many different ways but there's still one make with the stamp set and the cool thing about uh, this make was was taking it just next level that if, if you're really looking for imagery that maybe you wanted to create something home decor right with this set i'm going to bring this in so vicky created this now look at this panel right so this is done on some type of i'm guessing it's some type of wood frame it's very grunged in total vicky style right? You can see like the old ideology washers. You can see all that, that cool grunge and drip, very metallic, very industrial, all of the ideology hinge clips, but you can kind of see these little slide frames and all of these are stamped on mica. Can you guys see that? Beautiful on mica, but of course, tiny lights for the win. Yes, there's tiny lights that light up all of this. I mean, how, how beautiful is that, right? And look at the layer. It's almost like that these moths are kind of suspended in, I don't know, some type of sap, very, very Jurassic too, but they're almost just floating in that mica. You really see all the speckles. Again, I'll point out all the detail of those little images, the little images that come with moth study. Use those because that really does create a whole different vibe for these frames. You'll even see the numbers that are stamped right on the frames. I love the addition of these clips with that, the little string on there, but even just all that texture, right? A little bit of grit paste, just smudged around, 
but I love the metallic. It does. Can you guys see the metallic? There we go. I'm just trying to pick that up. And I, it's beautiful. It's beautiful just seeing the images because they do show up. I mean, I know that I'm getting a lot of, a lot of glare from the light, but it does show up just on its own, but also lighting it up with tiny lights. And I keep talking about tiny lights because they are part of the everyday line. Replaceable batteries. You pop this open. It has a switch. But what a, a beautiful thing for a, a mantle. Hang this on a wall. It's really cool. It's awesome. And yes, this is going back to Vicky. So Ted's like, ooh, cool. Yeah. yeah Vicky, Vicky already my, said, uh, I said my pile, my pile. Yeah, I know. Vicky already said, uh, can I get this one sent back? Absolutely. Of course. So well done. Beautiful to see, right? Cards, home decor. I mean, all the makers. It just knock it out of the park. Just so, so cool. All right. So this next one, I'm going to actually combine two sets because the makers really um, did a great play with both of these sets. And we're going to talk about the Bold Frights and the Halloween Doodles. Now, you're going to see some makes that just incorporate this, some that just incorporate this, but so many of the makers combine these two because they are scaled to work with one another and they do add a whole different touch of, of fun, right? Okay, so first we'll just talk about bold frights, right? We're just going to talk about the typography of that. What I love about that, and I mentioned that at the very beginning, is just having that bold sentiment. If you're a background person, you can incorporate that and just put that right over a background and you're good to go. But any little stamps, if you see here, you see those little sparkles in the back, that cool little retro look, okay? That's that stamp right here. So even though it's tiny, it doesn't mean that you can't stamp something and go in and add the accents. And I love seeing that it's stamped in a color that is pulled out from uh, the background. And I think that any time that you see, there we go, that you see layers, right? Can you guys see those layers in there? That is what it's all about. And Sharon, she just, she has that ability to, to just kind of create that layered color, but also has a, a grungy aspect of it. And I've said this again, if you really want an image to stand out, embossing is always going to give you the most visual impact because embossing enamels, especially black embossing enamel, is going to be opaque. Different than embossing glaze, but embossing enamel is going to be opaque. And that's what's really going to keep your image from, uh, from getting lost in the background. And I just, it's very cool just to kind of see that typography. Anita created a whole play with the typography by making this candy corn card. Isn't that fun? Just taking a slimline card, taking those bold frights, stamping it, just painting over it, just going in with, this could be oxide. This could be oxide or watered down paint. Not sure, but I love, it looks more like paint because it covered over the embossing powder. That's what I think. But I think it's very clever because you know I love candy corn and just going in and stitching that shape around it from that slimline card. I mean, how fun is that? Just a play on on the typography of Bold Frights, stamping that and creating a very cool card. Yeah, candy corn for the win. I do love it. All right. Then you can take that and if you're going to make larger cards, so Colbert created this one. I love this Colbert. I love, love, love this background. This is like Halloween central for me, right? To go into the blacks and the purples and the rust. But there is our moon mask in play. This again, just doing a little bit of blend where you just get a little bit of that wicking in there. And then the fact that you have that top part of the mask to go in and add the detail, even if it gets all drippy, it just really makes that pop. Combine that with your favorite die cuts. And these are even die cut out of a little crack leather. Can you see the paper? What a great use for that distressed crack leather cardstock just to give those bat wings that texture. I love that idea. I totally got to work with that idea. That's really cool. And then of course, the bold frights just on the background, but I love all the little, the little flex, the little bits of color, the little moon dust, right? Very, very cool. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, Anita said it was watered down paint on that. Thanks, very cool. But just beautiful, beautiful details of, again, focusing on the typography itself and just creating a card, stacking it for a slimline or putting it with something else, die cuts and a mask that creates a scene. So those are the three that I wanted to point out because you're going to see everything kind of uh, combined together. But sometimes you think, gosh, what can I just do with, you know, just a, a sentiment set? Well, you can do a lot, really. It just depends on how you want to, to play with it and what you want to incorporate with it, right? Great ideas for the makers. Just look at that moon. Oh, pure Halloween magic. All right. Then when it comes to the doodles, it's funny because like we had like Jen just 
played with the doodles. Like no combination of, of the text, but this is uh, an older stamp set from, I think last year is Halloween, right? We did this. And I think it's so playful and whimsy that really just touches on the whole doodleness of it. I love that little bit of the mica. But here you can see those that are stamped and colored. Jen does a lot of great coloring. I love seeing uh, so many people, Sharon did that in her card and then Jen did that as well. Use that little sparkle as the background. But how playful and fun for these elements because really when you look at it, we've got, well, there's the bottle that's there. There's the pumpkin that's there. We've got the skeleton there, but then we have the hat on him. Uh, having the candy he's holding the little sign and then we've got the ghost holding it and all of those are stamped colored and cut out on that card a really fun halloween slimline and i think that that little bit of the halloween mica because people always ask how to use the mica flakes well gosh you've seen them in the envelopes from uh, tifa you've seen it uh, back here and you've seen a lot of makers just use those mica flakes in different ways they do add a very cool nostalgic sparkle to the mix all right, then we're gonna get into, there's a lot of cards. Some some makers did a lot of series, so normally if they do a series, I'll, I'll pull those out. So Kath created these. Again, if you notice one thing, you guys see that circle in the background, so there we go. There is the moon mask. Do you always have to go in and add the detail layer? No, right? Depending on how your inks are going to wick, you're done, you're good to go. That's the, the benefit of using those little sprays and splattering. I love seeing the different areas inked a different color. So that's the other thing. If you're stamping with um, oxide, especially because it's going to be opaque, you can ink, 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 or if you have some type of stamping tool, you can you know, ink one section, stamp, wipe it off, ink another one, and then stamp it in the same area. But very cool to see those fun, whimsy doodles layered with the bold frights, right? And again, that little circle in the background. The circle, even if you're not using it as a moon, it just adds a great focal element for you to layer a stamped image on, right? Because it does, it kind of brings your eye into that and just sitting down and playing. So imagine you're sitting there and you're creating backgrounds, you're doing that, all your different colors, then you're going in, you're gonna stamp that wonderful uh, sentiment, right? That, that nice fright statement on there. Then you're gonna go in and add your doodles and you're done. And all of these, these are all stamped directly on there. So even though they're colored and they look layered, nothing is fussy cut. So it's very, when I, I talk about kind of doing that assembly line uh, making, you can definitely create it that way by just saying, you know, today I feel like doing backgrounds. Uh, today I feel like just stamping some text. Let me shake up the colors. Oh, today I'm going to stamp the images. Oh, now I'm going to sit in front of the TV and just doing some coloring. That's the, the beauty of working with it. And there's a lot of things that you can use for, for masking. You can use Distress Microglaze if you want to seal off some areas. Just a, a great way to incorporate the images, especially on cards. Cassie created this. I love this card, again, with the embossing. It adds such a great detail. Then we've got that fussy cut layering. I'm always just a fan of that because I, I'm not good at that. Uh, so when people just have that, that wonderful cutting ability. But there, again, the background. This is a stamp set from last year and just using that to stamp a background of text. Uh, I think I saw Sharon do that last year as well, where you just ink up that whole uh, tiny text stamp and just stamp it all as a background. What a cool card and that I put a spell on you. Again, black embossing, you see that a lot because man, embossing really pops and so much stitching. I love seeing that. It's fun to see people just you know, like using their, their sewing machines more and more for, for cards, especially when they're creating with that. Paula created this. I love the vintage vibe of this. I love the colors. And you know, this statement could not be more true for me. I am here for the candy. I'm always here for the candy. But you can see that stamping that those images. So remember on the candy, it's two images, right? But by switching up the colors, it just looks like so many more varieties of that same image. So changing up your ink colors. I love seeing the sparkles laid over the top and of course layered on those colors of cardstock. I love seeing that sentiment stamped on craft because it does. It gives that card like the perfect vintage Halloween candy vibe for me. Very cool. And I like the size of this card too. I don't know what size. It's just kind of a nice, I don't know. It's a Tim size card. It's a good size card. But there you go. Seeing all of those different pieces and then stamping the sparkles over the top. Beautiful color palette. That's the wonders of Distress. That's what I love it. Sometimes distress can be very bold and bright and other times you can just choose that palette and it's that perfect vintage touch, right? And candy cards, well, that's the thing because Sharon did a candy card, right? Same sentiment, same images. 
totally different kind of card. Why? Because as a maker, you do you. You follow your style and you can be inspired by something and go, oh, I love pairing those together. Hey, I'm going to do my my take on this. And I love when makers do that because they don't, well, at least I don't know if they do, but they don't really get together and kind of plan out what they're doing. But so often that they have a great opportunity for me to showcase the, the different styles of using the same images. So here, Shram went in. If you see these, see that little bit of sparkle on there, those little mica stains coloring with those. I love seeing all the different colors on uh, the lollipop, the candies there. Again, there's the embossing and just that little detail of splatter. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. Very cool look for, again, stamps, stamps. And yes, the statement remains true. I probably just need a shirt, Mario, that says that. I'm here for the candy, right? <laughs> That's what I need. So this card, I, I have to say, I, I did have to, to message Alberto and say, okay, before I go on there and I say something that I don't have a clue what I'm talking about, I need to understand this card. So this is the candy stamp, right? This is, this is that stamp, right? We've got right there. And then we have the little poison. There you go, there. But everything else is illustrated by Alberto. So he, he drew in the jar the cork, the tag, the writing. And he does that so often on a lot of images, he just has that ability to transform because he has that skill to, to draw. So I want to point that out so no one's saying like, oh, where's that jar stamp or whatever? I mean, seems like I need a jar stamp now, but that is, that's very cool when you just have that ability to say, hey, I'm going to take an image, I'm going to use that as kind of my anchor point, and I'm going to just go from there. So all of these candy pieces are stamped, are colored, are layered, that is, and then he just fills in the blanks with all of the other illustration and coloring. It's just, it's hard to believe that that is just hand colored. It's absolutely amazing. Especially, yeah, things are not what they seem. Yeah, very fitting, <laughs> very fitting. So I'm like, is that a stamp? No, unbelievable, right? And look at that stitching detail, but just the ability to shade. I would say that someday I wanna be a colorer like that, but I just, I can watch it and I'm always a fan of seeing it but it's just something that I never have the patience to do because the, the level of depth and detail, absolutely stunning. I know, and everyone's like, I think we need a jar stamp. I know, I kind of think so too. I, I like that idea of, of having that layer over the top of it, really cool. So layering elements, Paula created this. Again, layering, layering, layering. You can layer everything from a pattern cardstock, right? Like wood grain cardstock. I love this idea of the shifter. So she just like, yeah, I'll show you shift. I'll shift from black, but then the other layers, I'll, I'll do a little orange here, a little green here, a little purple here. What a great idea to shift in different colors instead of like you can choose one color as your anchor color, say black, but then when you shift by switching up your colors as you're going around, what a cool background, right? With that shifter stencil and the ability to switch up your colors on the background. That was very cool. I don't, I don't recall seeing that. And I love how it's just, again, lightly, lightly misted just to give it that little bit of distortion, right? Have that little blur, that little soft. And then you can see here all of those little doodle pieces that were not only stamped and colored, but there you go, a little glossy accents for the win. Layer that over the top. Beautiful little detail, because that's what makes these really sparkle and shine, and then just stamped onto a tag, and then stitched onto a card front. So. When you talk about layering, that's the thing to remember that you can layer all sorts of different components. It could be uh, textured cardstock. It could be something stenciled. It could just be images that you stamp and layer and you have, you know, any of your little tricks, whether it's glitter, whether it's glossy accents, anything, just a, a fun card again for, for candy. Then we're going to go into uh, the skeleton. It's real fun. I, I kind of organize these based off of this guy. And so many people use this skeleton in so many different ways. He had such fun personality. I'm like, okay, I got to throw this in the series of it. So this card, just going to, again, I always like to start like from an angle. So Zoe with a Y created this one. There we go. I was trying to capture it. There's like a little outline. Can you guys see that? You can't see it there, but there, it's like a little metallic outline. I'm guessing that's like a little sparkly glitter pen or yeah. And it's going to be interesting because Juliana created a card where uh, she did kind of did that similar outline. And I love seeing just that hand drawn outline 
outside of that bold text. It's really cool. It adds a cool detail. But again, love the background. I love seeing all of that purple. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. A little bit of just love all the layers of color, a little black in there. And there is our fun skeleton and of course the witch hat and with little glossy accents made for a playful vibe. Now I'm just going to start layering these here because there's so many. Emma created this card. There we go. Classic moon, Emma. Beautiful moon background. I love seeing that. I'm guessing that's prize ribbon in the background because, well, that blue is just glorious because it can go from, see, dark and moody to vibrant. You guys see that? That's a magic prize ribbon. If you haven't seen it yet, you haven't worked with it, play around. I'm hoping that's prize ribbon. If not, you created certain magic, Emma, but I love it. Um, and again, when you're looking at that, we've got just the ability of layering images. These are all stamped on there for the background. And then up here, we've got that skeleton. I love how he's doing the dance on those cutout pumpkins. There's a little bones, a little bit of that moss detail. It's not fun. And you see those little bit of mica. So again, mica flakes, little details. It's the details that matter on your makes. You guys get to do as much or as little detail as you choose. But when you look at things and you're like, when would I use a little bit of mica? Right there when you want a little bit of reflection because mica flakes are going to reflect a little different and having those Halloween ones, those kind of uh, smoky gray ones, very cool, right? Totally different look for, for that. Anita created this card. Again, there's our moon in the corner. We see this guy, he's totally here for the candy. I love how the bones are layered over the top of that sentiment and just how he's got those candy pieces in each hand. Background, absolutely beautiful. I love that, that contrast of color and then just seeing that mica stain just thrown over the top. But see this embossed in white and that moon in the corner, see isn't that great just how your eye just kind of goes right across. A cool use for, again, the images. You'll see because all of those are like, that's what it's all about. Joy created this card. Again, we can see this is when I was talking about the shifter multi just can co totally go to another level because after this is done, this is actually shifted uh, one, two, three, four times, right? So you're first going to do your shift of the regular color. So that was going to be like black and green. That's going to be that shift, black and green, black and green. Then in the, in the open space, you just do it again. And then it shifted between like orange and purple. Now you can create like such a cool background. There's our little skelly. I love shrink plastic, right? Shrinky ding. Like how many times, like when was the last time we saw some shrink? So I loved seeing that. It's just fun when you kind of see those things that you're like, dang it. I remember that. What a cute way to just use an image and create that little charm that goes on a card. There is that beautiful black glitter that, that kind of frames that in. And then we've got the bold fright. So that is re really when you start taking shifting to the next level by inking, 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 inking. And once you do it, you just, you kind of get into it. You really do. You find your groove for that, uh, for sure. This card, Barbara created this. Look at the moon with that mica. The moon is the focal point of this. And I mean, it's got so much metallic detail in here. So this layer, you can see, use that top stencil portion of the moon. And then it's got those mica flakes. Man, those are perfect. But then all of the stitching detail, it's like it's done in metallic thread. Can you guys see that? Great metallic detail, really playful, fun, whimsy colors with uh, the purples and the blues on there. We've got that skelly. He's got some great little detail that's embossed on there and using the quote chip and then of course the bats and there's a little sparkles, but pretty crazy so far how uh, this guy had just, he has a completely different look and personality kind of based on, on the story. But I love seeing that moon with those mica flakes. Isn't that beautiful, especially on that, that big one. Gosh, I love how it catches that. Then there's so many different styles for this. Vicky created this one. This is very scratched and grungy and I love just seeing there we go. We can see that in the background. It just kind of looks like a chalkboard to me. I love the look of it. V sanded, very scuffed. I love the, the craft stock. It is so scratched up. And I kind of like just that, that stamping that just has that little bit of a, a glitch, that little off register. But again, a chalkboard vibe. It's not a cool card. And I love seeing that just with those, those additional colors. Vicky always has little tricks up her sleeve of, of how she creates certain effects, certain aesthetics when it comes to, to that. When I saw this card, I knew Tammy B like, um, you know, creating something fun because she did the, the whole skeleton with with the Sizzix release, kind of the skeleton dance and move these out of the way. But there is, again, a fun dance card. Now, if you look at the background, 
The background is mica stain, right? Empty tomb, so you have that cool gray, but that little shine. And I just loved seeing these guys uh, stamped on there. This is like a, an embossed resist where it's embossed and then uh, ironed out because you can see there's no, there's no texture, yet it's a perfect resist. So brilliant technique uh, to, to use, especially for Halloween with the skeletons and the bones. And then a strange thing is happening. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to just get the, the sparkle in there. Let me see if I just open that. There you go. Can you guys see on the outside too? I always like to point out the details because, you know, even though it's just the edge, there we go trying to get that even though it's just the edge of the card having even if like this was an idea where i thought man just having a piece of maybe black cardstock if i'm ever spraying the overspray what a cool background that could be uh, on a card or a layer so a fun card for for that well i don't need to tell you who did this one but i will alberto created this card same skeleton a whole new thing so the skeleton is the stamp everything else he is drawn in from the guitar to uh, the sombrero to the, the shorts on him and just the detail in his face. Just, you wouldn't think it's the same stamp, but it is. So much detail in there. There you go. Let it go. Live your dream with passion, right? Totally reminds me of the movie Coco. I love that movie. But how fun is that? Just to see that the depth and layers. I could stare at this all day, you guys. I could. Because I just... I, the ability to color and you can see i mean i'm moving it so you know it's hand done it's not it didn't come out from a, a printer <laughs> you'd think it did but so much detail in that absolutely beautiful and and such such a different style right again when you're looking at these cards that's what i think is so cool and i try to capture that and and i think just the makers make make it shine because they just take it and they're like yeah i got this i got this here's what i'm going to do and you can just identify what it is that, that they wanted to create and the look that they wanted to achieve with, with that stamp. And we're still in kind of those same sets. So now we'll kind of move on to, <laughs> to the ghost because the ghost, well, he's got his own personality too of the set. This, this boo card, Joy created it. I love it. I know this, this is an action wobbler now. Yep. I used to call it just a little thinger because that's just what it was, but it's an action wobbler. And I love the, <laughs> you can tell, I love these. I am a five-year-old. Yep, do not adjust your screens. It's supposed to just do that. Um, but there again, taking that stamp and just repeating it, just doing different colors of stamping in the background. But you'll notice that this one really pops. Why? Embossed, we talked about that. Embossing is going to always make something a focal point, but all the other colors can certainly layer. And then you uh, cut and stamp and yeah, all day long, okay? All day long <laughs> for that. Barbara created this. You can see that beautiful little moon mask in the background, just used with the colors. I love just seeing just that, that little bit of sparkle in there with the stars. There's, I put a spell on you. Look at that mix of embossing powder. It's got some little gold flakes in there. Beautiful, but this background done with the mica stains is what's giving that wonderful luster and shimmer. And just that little ghost just kind of peeking in. And I love the touch of adding that black distressed glitter to a space that just gives that little that little twinkle, isn't that cute? So good, right? And still just working with the cards and you're like, yeah, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, right? But they all look totally different. Yuko created this card. This is a great little shaker card. Look what's in there, some bones, right? There's some candy in there. I'll try to shake it. Just gotta take my fingers, there we go. There's, so there's little bones, there's little candies, there's little sequins under there. And she stamped some candy in the background and then stamped that boo on the transparency. I love that damask stamp on there. And again, our little ghost. So I love seeing the, just the whole look of a shaker card. I love seeing that, that stacked decal. That's such a cool die set just to be able to add that torn tattered edge to a window if you don't want it clean cut. I do like that because you have all those different uh, shapes of that deckled edge if you're cutting, cutting frames. Not done with the trimmer, but actually the die. But what a fun shakety shake, right? Cool, again with the boo, just something something different each time. Oh, you see that. Yep, Colbert created this card. Again, another little, another little action wobbler on there. Now look at, he just has a whole different personality with that witch hat, does he not? Yes, just a whole different personality using the, the skull and crossbones stencil. I love seeing all of that. Just, I love all the drips and layers back there. There you can see the shifter and that's the thing. I mean, the shifter stencil, 
when you guys start using it as an element, it really does add a very cool effect that you can't achieve with a stamp. And I say that because the, the beauty of a stencil is that ability to fade it out. And the fact that we can shift that multicolor pattern, it's almost like you, you think it's some sort of a printed pattern because you wouldn't think that you would have that multiple color from a stamp or a stencil, right? Normally it would just be all done the same color. And that's what I love about Shifter Multi. It takes a little bit of time, but if you're only doing this section, you're talking minutes. You put it down, you shift. And really, if you're, if you're doing a color in black, then you could always do the color and you don't even have to clean it. Especially if, if black is your next layer, it doesn't matter that you had orange on the stencil because black would be black. So uh, that's just another kind of time-saving tip for that. I love just seeing that, yep. Yeah, he really, he's got some serious action with that hat. <laughs> oh, so cool, so fun. This one, I love just seeing the color of this. Nico created this. Look at this fun ghost. Oh my gosh, love his color. And just the, the tipped over potion bottles, it's like, you know, he drank some sort of glowing potion and now he's just floating away with the elixir and potion. Such a cute tag. I love the look of that. It's like very salvage patina. Love the look, I love seeing that little bit, uh, a brick kind of coming in, the details. And that's the other thing about a make, right? You can take components and just utilize it and create your style. If your style is, is shakers because you want to assemble, great. You want to do inky backgrounds, great. You want to just stamp text, great. You want to work on a tag and just use some components, great. You do you, the making part of this, my gosh, you guys, it should be fun. It should never be overwhelming. I see things after a lot of people go, oh, it's so overwhelming, I don't know what to do. That's, that's actually quite sad and disappointing because this should do nothing but inspire you to say, I love this idea, I love this idea, and I'm going to do my version of that idea, or I'm gonna replicate that. The makers are, are here to inspire. Everyone should be creating and sharing to inspire. So I love seeing that ghost in that color because he really pops from the background. I just think it, it's so great. Anita created this card. Again, this is very similar to uh, the other style from the skeleton, but I wanted to separate that because I thought it had such a, a unique feel, but it was the same thing with the moon. She had the skull, she had the verse and the bones, but still taking that idea. But to me, it's a completely different looking card because you added different elements over the top. So here there's a little ledge with the poison bottle and the candles. There's the boo, the ghost just done out of vellum. And if you heat vellum, it will often get bubbly and ripply or I don't know, maybe this is a transparent Yupo. Could be that too. But I love the blistered effect of the ghost. And again, layered on that moon. But I really wanted just to, to show you that because so far just having those different, those different elements or appearances of the ghost, that is what's cool. Zoe with a Y created this background, very electric, very limey, uh, dark background for that cool moon. So again, you've seen everything from the moon being um, clean and focused, different colors and even blurred out in the background. And I love the look of that. There you can see that shifter with just a little bit of, of paste through that. There is, I just, I love the a little bit of texture, right? And the embossing. I love the embossing enamel because see, you get those cool cracks. If you emboss it thick and you, you can put it in the freezer and you can create those cracks, but what great effects and great color. Because when you see these, just a, a beautiful card, that electric lime for Halloween, that's what I wanted to, when I was, sorting these out, it's like, look at all these different colors. Just looking at the different colors from these makers, incorporating that ghost, right? You can do uh, multicolor or green or just orange and black or throw in some purple or, it's so cool to see uh, all of the different personalities from that, right? So much fun. They're just fun. And, and I like to show that because you think, what would I just do with the ghost? I don't know, it might be too cutesy. Well, you see here that, that cute can go a long way because it can certainly have a, a grungy vibe to it as well. Now there's some some other pieces into this. I thought I always love when you kind of see little ideas for Halloween. Cassie created this uh, just creating these little candy bags, right? Where you add these little candy minis, you go in, create a background, right? Do a little plaid background stamping, add the ghost, do a little embossing on there and create little treat bags. So if you're if you're doing this for neighbors or coworkers, it's a great way that you can incorporate stamps to really personalize uh, a little treat. And I think it's very, very cute to add uh, those details and elements. I love seeing the little jack-o'-lantern face painted on uh, to that pumpkin. And again, just using the hat that I put a spell on you that's embossed, a little bit of candy, a little tiny attacher to staple that on. It is always about the detail, but very cute idea, Cassie. I like seeing that for, yeah, 
Halloween party. Just really, really cute. Who wouldn't want that? Right? Who wouldn't want those little cards? I always love to see that that whole little that whole little kind of party play on this. So these cards, Juliana created this, and I think in the sneak peek, it did create a little bit of a frenzy because people saw this and they're like, ooh, new snarkies. Nope, no new snarkies, but you can make the snarkies that you have for any of the seasons a whole different look because of incorporating the, the stamps, the Halloween doodles. So let's kind of take, let's look through this whole card because there's a lot going on. If you see here the background, there's rest in peace at Undertaker right? So even on something whimsy and fun, you can still get that cool typography. Then we have that print, the print of the shatter stencil, right? Creating that monoprint. So you've got a cool uh, overlay on that. This is what I was saying when I talked about uh, Zoe with a Y doing that, where she stamped and did that little outline with the silver pen. Here, Juliana stamped those and then just outlined it with a black pen. And I think that touch of a quick outline really gave that very clean block font a hand done look, right? It looks like you just hand drew those letters and painted those in instead of kind of the opposite to stamp that. So if you're looking at at this font, this bold frights or any of them, because we've done, you know, bold tidings last year and we did the bold sayings and you're like, it just looks a little too clean for my style. This is a great way to, to completely transform it into a very hand done look by stamping it and then just outlining it, right? And that's both of these are done. But now you just look at the cats, right? So fun. Two different snarky cats. These are <laughs> original one, but adding the drippy candle, adding the hats, especially over their eyes, the poison bottles. I love the toadstools coming out of the back. This one just covered in candy. Hilarious. And I love how she just has, see the little paws cut out where it's just holding onto those pieces of candy, like not letting it go. Absolutely charming. There's a little glossy accents on there. So very, very cute. So even though everyone's like, I want more, I want more, take what you have and make it new, make it fun and make it work for the style. Both of these cards, just so cute, right? So cute to kind of see all of that. Now this background, same thing. That's a little X stencil that we have. So adding your stencils, adding your stamped images to create a background, a background, as, as Di would say, a background's a background because it's in the background. And that's the thing to remember layer 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 those details even though they're in the background they're still going to shine through they're going to become part of the overall aesthetic of your finished card i just think both of these are are really great i loved all the different ideas really this was really one of my favorites of just going in and outlining and probably just not thinking about it just going for it but it adds a, a cool touch and a great way to bring in the cats because i know uh, they're they're favorites for a lot of people now this tag series these are all etc tags which would make great decor Jen created these and this one is just using the bold frights from this year but these Halloween little icons these guys right here is not this set this is from gosh I don't even know the set number I'm sure Stampers Anonymous is here they would know um, but these little characters these little monsters are, are an older Halloween set and they are just as cute and just as charming so Jen I loved I loved seeing this so these backgrounds as you can see so many cool distress backgrounds if you're going to use these as gifts or decor or you want something that uh, the recipient can like hang from a wreath or put around a wine bottle the cool thing about the etc is we also do the number eight size etc tags so you can still work on your tag or do cardstock and then you can mount them onto these and then they become a decoration right something that is just going to be completely durable that you can use year after year so if you create something and you create tags that you you know maybe you want to hang them from a garland right? Or put them as decor. That's the cool thing about the etc. thick board. It is not chipboard. You can hear that I'm knocking into that. It is a very strong, cool paper-based board. But what I love from the detail is that we have this bold text, but then she highlighted this with that glitter, that little sparkle of the black distress glitter that we did for Halloween. So highlighting a word, or in this case, it was the whole word, because that's all that was on that one stamp. I'm here for the candy love the trick-or-treat so this is again taking that that idea and repetition I'm gonna make backgrounds I'm gonna stamp these I'm gonna do the glittering I'm gonna do the little accent I'm gonna do the coloring I'm gonna do the fussy cutting and if you look at the background they have a little bit of that mica stain in there that's what's just gonna give it that little shimmer 
And remember the cool thing about the mica stain, especially if you incorporate it with the other stains, is that it's going to always pull into itself, right? It is going to be attached to the colorant. It doesn't go over the whole thing. That's the beauty of, of working with it, is that you just have so many uh, great layers and details. What a cute tag series, right? Makes you want to make a garland, right? Tie that up, just fun from the colors to the imagery to the little sparkle. So yes, if you have the set, great. If you want to add some new elements, you can use that. Oh, Ted said it's CMS 311 Scared Silly is where these little guys, see, I knew Stampers Knives would have it because really, let's talk about his sparkly brains. Yeah, that was me. This is this is me at Halloween. September 1, that's it. Brain only thinks of candy. candy. I think of it all the time, but especially that is like candy corn. I count down the days to September 1. Even though it's available, I will not eat it until that day. And Brock's Autumn Mix, you are mine. Okay. We're in the home stretch, guys. One more set, and you would think, my gosh, how is he going to possibly talk about five stamp sets for uh, almost three hours? Probably going to be over three hours. Well, you know me. I like to do that. And these, well, I have to be honest, and I said this to Mario last night, I am so surprised that out of all of the makes, this was the set that received the most makes from makers. Because the makers get to do what they want. They get to make from whatever of the sets they want. They get all the sets, but they can make whatever they want from the sets. They don't even have to use a set if they don't want to, right? Because they can still make whenever they want. But the fact that so many makers made multiples from this set, man, you made this guy super happy because I love this set. And I know when I showed it to Stampers Anonymous and when I was talking to Paul about it, I'm like, people are either gonna get it or they are gonna hate it. But that's okay because I love it and I have to design for me. I have to be authentic. It makes me smile. It's cool. I've not seen this style of, of imagery out there uh, in the market. I've seen hipster skulls, of course, don't get me wrong. But to see it in stamp form, I just loved it. And really, you guys, makers, you made me so dang happy with all these makes. So buckle up for wicked hipsters. All right. So this one. And that's the thing, like there's so many different styles of this. So Keisha created this one. There you go. I wanted to show you the shine on the glasses. And actually Keisha was the only maker, I believe. I be yes, I believe the only maker that used both of them on one make. Everyone else did multiple makes of, of either or. But I love this and I love, hey boo, I've got my eyes on you. And just again, seeing those, those wicked hipsters with the glasses, this is just down out of vellum. You'll see that some cut this out even more. Some didn't even use the glasses because you don't have to, but they just make me smile. Their, their smile, it's well beyond Halloween. Anyone that loves steampunk or uh, just that whole kind of uh, rockabilly vibe, well, that's what it is because that's a whole illustration. The artist that did these, like unbelievable skills. So that card, that Hey Boo, Keisha did such a good one. Now, so many makers did like a pair. So that's what I'm going to bring them in as is the pair where they did they did a, a card of each one, just, just not together. Same concept. So Tammy B created this. Look at how fun and colorful and playful this card set is, where the hipsters, they're their own, and she used the accessories as the background, right? So we've got this guy where the glasses, the bow tie, the splatter, that's his background in all those cool, fun colors, the little splattering, the sewing, He's fussy cut and layered, the stranger within. And then we have her where she's got her glasses, her little string of beads, and her immortal beauty. How cool are these cards? Because really, these cards, birthday cards, right? Totally, all day long, anniversary, friend, anything. They're just fun because, well, they're wicked hipsters. I love the idea of those accessories being used as a background in all of in all the colors. Just what a great, great idea, Tammy B. This next card set, Yuko created these. Look at these. Come on. Seriously, wanted posters of the hipsters. So this is an alphabet stamp set that I have, a number stamp set. So she stamped those, those letters out and just created this. Look at the cool, cool effect in the background, that little bit of grit around the edge just to make this look like, like old coppery sign, like definitely from the Wild West. I love just the, that little sheer bit of, of tape on there. And I love just seeing just that torched trip and just that edge of that wrinkled bit and just using the other stamps just to create these wanted posters uh, for both of these. And really, her pink lips and that gold tooth, I can't even. 
I can't even with that right there. <laughs> it's those things, you guys, that just that derail my imagination. See that little bit of rouge on her cheeks? Come on. Come on. But look at that background. Look at that metallic. That metallic craft sock. Just love that with that little bit of grit and grime on there and just all the wrinkling. Seriously, this would, this would even be good for a birthday party. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. Really fun to, to add these elements because they are absolutely cool. Just old, grungy, fun. How can you not? Oh, I love that uh, Stanford's is kind of throwing this in. So yes, I, I don't know what this one's called. It's definitely an alphabet that's on there as well as the numbers. Very clever, clever way to, to incorporate those. And they just keep coming because the styles are just like, can we just for a moment? Really? I mean, I really, when I was setting this up, I was like, Mario, you, you have to come in. Cause like this, this imagination, I don't know. This is like Wonka, Ben and Jerry's. I don't know what it is, but it just channels my inner cool, just completely wild. So Natifa created these envelopes, uh, such a, just how wild and funky style. So first of all, the wicked hipsters, on the doodle skeleton with the candy and here for the treats and then just using that label tape this was from last year's halloween man do i wish it came back it did not but um i love it what a great use because it's almost like you know cool caution tape and then you can see the the mica stain on the back but how fun and look at his glasses where i said see that the detailed cutting of it the little accent of the mica and i love how two of his teeth have been blacked out just knocked out right, right from his mouth very cool but psychedelic colors i absolutely love it and then this the whole magic now i i'm sure i know the answer to this if i ask i could be wrong but it appears to me that these letters are hand cut this does not look like a die cut at all this looks like it looks like yeah i think so i think Tifa went into it with a blade and created that background. There's the mica in the background. There's that little glitter on her glasses, even her little sparkly tooth. I love seeing the wings in the background, her purple hair with all the detail. I gotta get into these pens, guys. You guys are doing some crazy detail work from uh, said, from, yep. from the pen work. Yep, hand, hand cut, oh my heck, seriously. That is unbelievable. And then this, this is such a classic stamp set. This is, I think, Cirque Alphabet. Gosh, this was this was back when they were on just those plain backgrounds. I love this font. So to see it use that magic and that little bit of transparency, but just how fun and just quirky, whimsy are these envelopes? Because this is, again, just stamped with, there you go, bold frights. And then she went and cut out all the letters to show that mica underneath. I mean, this crazy detail, so fun. These are just, I don't know what those pens are. <laughs> he was like, what are those pens? I don't know. I said, I got to get into the pens because all the little detail from, yeah, I saw Zoe created with these and now I've seen like, I don't know. They're very cool. Well done, Tifa. I love this. This, the makers just blow my mind. So speaking of Zoe with a Y, this one, I take it back. Remember I said only one person did it. Zoe with a Y created it. Um, it's because it was this, it was like a playing card, right? I saw this and I'm like, this this is very cool. So yes, so we have, uh, what, what did you say? She said gel pens. Oh, gel pens. Natifa said gel pens on that. So yes, we have uh, Keisha and Zoe with a Y created with both of those. I apologize. I, I see this as a card and I see this as a card and that is a very clever Simline card. So look at that. Look at those images layered over that collage paper. Oh, under those colors. Oh, yeah. It's very cool, right? It's a cool tattoo for sure. Very, very cool in there because it just, the detail of that, unbelievably wicked, cool hipster. The rainbow color and just how those are, are flipped around and you're gonna actually see like a, a cool playing card idea as well from, from Nico and Alberto. I think it's just cool. Love it, love the card. I mean, and I have to bring some stuff in. I'm gonna go through, well, I'll go through a couple more and I have to bring these in because seeing them all together, just, well, I'm going to even start like seeing this color and then going in with, with these envelopes here. Right. And then seeing this style, right. And then seeing this style and then seeing 
the fun playful star so far just like such a cool such a cool vibe with with these wicked hipsters we're, we're only halfway like now we kind of go into like i think this is more of the colorful uh playful whimsy side even from these wanted posters and then you'll just see i, I still have to go <laughs> you're gonna see they're cool all right keep going tim so we've got these cards juliana created these cards again classic halloween right with the purple and green stamped cut layered stenciled in the background stamped in the background stamped with the sentiment it's very cool just to see uh creating this and juliana really does like this is kind of the, the style of card where you know you create that size you do your stenciling your inking but each one has its own unique look to it depending on uh the colors and imagery whether you're using stamps whether you're using different stencils and of course the color that you layer in i think they're just really fun definitely halloween cards right so when we're getting into trick-or-treat or boo definitely halloween and then speaking of definitely halloween anita created these again that slimline style in that traditional orange and black here you can see that shifter multi in play right to create that very cool background and then we've got the hipsters and i love just seeing that little shine in his glasses there you go that reflection in there these are these are cut out and then layered over the top of it cool background and then again it's just a bunch of halloween hocus pocus humbug and boo uh, man when the makers just kind of create their own thing it's hilarious i put a halloween spell on you screams of laughter again look at the look at the beads see how they just kind of connect right around her neck you can add that little element but that that touch of shine in the glasses very very cool and this is all cut out but here's another great tip on this one that i want to share that anita did so if you notice on this Wicked Hipster, she's got these wonderful little, uh, these hairs that come out. This is still fussy cut, but the bottom layer has been stamped. So this is stamped and then layered on the top. That's one of the things from a, a fussy cut aspect. If you don't want to lose that detail and you plan on layering this on the top, stamp the image because you're still going to get those details. And now you still get the depth of it, but you don't lose all those other elements and you don't have to cut them because they are, they are so small. But great cards right for halloween with that traditional uh orange and black palette and the purple and green palette then we just get into some just totally unique different kind of makes so nico and alberto created this they they each created playing cards and they kind of did their own style and i think it's very cool to see that same images totally different style depending on the maker so alberto created the the color nico that vintage grunge and look at how cool from just taking that playing card concept and doing that so there are the kings well done guys there are the kings and then let me see if i can set these down let's just move this out of the way and there they are there are the queens so cool right such a great idea for the hipsters so even if you're doing you know Again, beyond Halloween, maybe you're doing a, a poker party or just you, people that like just games, classic things. How cool to use these images in such a, a different style. So fun. That just shows really the versatility of an image depending on your creative style and how you want to color and shade, right? If you're into Copics or colored pencils or anything like that, or if you're into the, the grungy side and still add the, the pops of color. And even down to the detail of how their cards are done, right? From the clean outline to the stitch and the die cut. So very cool. I love that they collaborate on uh, creating that the totally different style of the same, the same concept of the cards. Well done. Pretty amazing, right? So amazing. So Barbara created this tag. Love the tag of that palm reader. We have her in there. Again, just seeing that the mica stains just a layer on top of that we've got the the strings from the mummy cloth in there seen a lot of quote trips being used any of that stuff that you have even if you didn't use up your stuff from last year from your embellishments from your ephemera quote chips metal you can utilize that just a great way to to add a tag halloween tag that you can add to a treat bag something really fun emma created this card now look at that shifting right so if you're going to shift this much this is this is a feat emma because you have to repeat this many times it is actually easier than you think because all you have to do when you're going to the next section is just kind of overlap that shifter into a previous one so you get that 
that line up just perfect. But look at how cool that the shifter multi background is. And then it's the colors. I love the colors. Maybe this is what kind of sparked the whole dilution thing with that wonderful uh, red hair and the glasses. But just seeing that that stamped in that that linen color, so cool. And then that circle that just kind of has that moon background and then time for wicked fun and just the detail of Emma's cards from the stitching to the the painted metal embellishments like the metal stars the hardware heads I just love the, the color of this I really do and this is just these are embossed so it has a really cool texture very cool love it it's, it's like that no line watercolor it's just it's fascinating to me to see that so beautiful right Paula created this one totally good hashtag YOLO you only live once Again, shifter multi in action, a different scale, right? So now we're talking the next size up from shifter multi, different color. If you guys don't get into shifters, hopefully you will now because you'll see the potential of, of doing these shifters. The only reason they're called shifter multi is because you get three sizes in one pack, but all of the other shifters that are individual, it's the same concept of shifting. It's just that one size scale of the image. Look at that little gold tooth that she has, the glasses with just that little stone right there probably had two stones I could tell but don't know where it is but look at that all in the detail so Mario you're missing one of Paula's diamonds I'm sure it's somewhere some well, yeah I know I don't know I, I dig that even better because that would be like what I would have but look at the, look at the <laughs> that's totally me if I had it, I'd be like I'd kind of flick that off I love seeing again uh, Paula channeled that that idea that if you're going to do fussy cutting and you have something with all the detail stamp it first and then layer over the top. It's just such a great idea for people that want to, to cut, but maybe you don't want to do all those extra details. If you stamp it down first, you still get, I even think it provides even more depth from seeing the fussy cut. Great coloring job on that too. Just beautiful, beautiful. Oh, Paula said YOLO was Ellie's idea. Well done, Ellie. Because YOLO, that is, <laughs> I was going to say, that's definitely wicked hipster, right? Just to have her on there and be like, YOLO, okay. Just the cards, they just get, they just get, they're so fun. Everyone see, again, just points out a totally different idea, right? Every single card. So Sharon created this card. Again, you're seeing that detail. That must just be the whole gel pen thing. Definitely. Shifter multi, shifter multi, 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 right? Orange and purple, black and gray, and then filling in the whole background. I love that little detail. There's another gold tooth. And just the coloring work of that. Now see? Fussy cutting, right? You're really good with the scissor. You can even go around all those little wispy hairs. Yeah, that's not me, but I love that. And I love that Sharon just cut her out as one solid piece. So doing all of your stamping and layering, even with the necklace and then cutting that out, very cool. And then we have the bold frights of that card. Just super fun. Kath created this. I love the color palette of this, Kath. I love having just that little bit of like netting that tool that's on there that's trapped that little bit of sequence and mica, but look at the colors on here. That red and gray with that little touch of metallic under there, just really beautiful. And leave a little sparkle wherever you go. You see that? Just a great card. Again, this could be a birthday card. So fun, so cool, and it's completely different color palette. So I always love that about Kath. There you can see the shifter multi. That's the beauty of it. You get to still do whatever your style is, your look or feel to it. All right, a few more, we're good. Uh, Colbert created this one, had very, I, I love that like people channel the idea of using uh, an alphabet so death becomes her and creating that whole storyline for this, this cool stamp of the Wicked Hipster. You see a little paste around the frame, little accent with glossy accents and glitter and just that fussy cutting around the letters. A very awesome card and totally different and I love the play on words. The death becomes her and look at the glasses so you'll notice some people cut them out so you can see the eyes and some just filled those in and even if you're adding that little sparkle in color how hip is that but look at the fussy cutting around the necklace stop it right now whoa that's cool yeah not me but cool joy created this card again uh, joy did this on one of her last cards using the fabric so this is uh, my fabric eclectic elements and I love seeing that card with the fabric and look how she continued that fabric over that little hairband of the wicked hipster so using fabric as a background for a card very cool love the fussy cut of of her and I love seeing that extension of fabric 
over the top and then stamp to still get the detail. So what a cool card, right? Because you kind of see that chevron pattern just kind of going right through her. But then that's all fussy cut. And again, geez, you guys, cutting that out? Stop it. Wow. That's incredible. But great idea. So if you have fabric or different kind of pattern papers or backgrounds, I love seeing that, that kind of overlap or the continuation of the palette. And look at that. Look how it's just lining up. No way. I wouldn't even try that. That's just very cool just to see that whole effect. Well done, Joy. Well done, Boo. Very good. All right. Two more. We got this. All right. We got this, Mario. Easy, easy. That's right. So, Barbara, <laughs> look at the eye for the Wicked Hipster. It's really cool. And I love seeing the chain that goes through this. So, there's one of the creepy eyes. We saw it in uh, the first skull that Cassie did on Rest in Peace. And now we see it on the Wicked Hipster. That's just hilarious to me. I love, I love seeing those eyes. But again, you see the texture of the, that's like a spill and splat stencil that we have there. There's Condemn with that little bit of sparkle and some ideology on there. That's just fun. And the colors, wow. The colors really pop. Just so many different styles. So I love that, Barbara. Just Because you see how he just has a whole different playful personality. A whole different thing. You just, you, you see so many different personalities of the Wicked Hipsters. From the cards to to these playing cards, to these tall cards, to the Halloween cards, to the cool uh, funky envelopes. Again, the whole whimsy side of that. And then I love just that dual kind of playing card. We've got these that Tammy did. I love seeing those accessories as a background. And Keisha putting those both together to create a fun playful card. Then we have the wanted poster. So look at this pile of Wicked Hipsters. So cool, right? I have one more make to show you, but I need to clear these out because I can't explain this make. Please don't ask me to explain this make. You'll have to ask the maker about the make because it has us stumped. Right, Mario? Completely. Completely stumped. And I'll show it to you in just a minute. Well done, makers. I love, love, love. Your talents, your talents are endless. All right, so our final make is this card that Vicky created. And I don't know if, I hope it does it justice here, but so if you look at it, it is a, it is a card and it's got this cool frame. It says for skill and amusement, but it's like this, this lenticular thing, right? So if you look at him, you can see him in all his kind of cool, uh, muted taupe glory. There's our wicked hipster. And then if I tip it, there he is. Look at that party. Look at that party, that purple hair, that face. Again, there he is, vintage, in just his cool style. And then whatever, skill and amusement. So there is the card. And yes, look at that. What the what? This is like fractured, little shattered mica over there. So yeah, that whole skill and amusement. So when you look at it, it I mean, you you still see him. That's the whole thing. Like I look at the card and I see him and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. And I vintage color, vintage color that like, seriously, how many weeks is that card? That's what I got to say. Just, <laughs> oh my gosh. I've not ever seen that done with a stamped image before. I can't wrap my head around how it's possible or done, but I celebrate it. I really do because it's cool. I mean, all the makes are cool. It's just this one. I, I, I don't understand it, but I certainly celebrate it. So let's just one more time. There's a vintage and there's the what? 